meteorologist Sean Cable on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Right now it's 31. Good morning to you. Hogfanatic.com brought to you by Dr. Lance Forbes, Diamond Dental in Cedar Rapids. Doc, I'll be calling you next week. I lost lost a filling. Oh. Uh, but don't worry, uh, uh, doctor. It's uh, There's food up there keeping keeping it. That's the worst. <laughs> Dirk Sterner Taxidermy, Wild Rose Casino in Clinton, Streets Maintenance, the Oxio Kin in the Amanas, Premier Automotive in North Liberty, Hertine and Stocker Jewelers 101 South Dubuque Street, downtown Iowa City, the Midtown Family Restaurants, Supo's Flowers, the home of 1-800-800-ROWS. Supo's Building and Remodeling, GT Car and his crew. Mike's E-Keys for Cars. Steve Anderson, Hawkeye Title and Settlement. And Patrick Eads, his son Tyler and the great staff and service department at Deary Brothers Ford on Mormon Trek. Tommy Lang sitting in for a suitor. Who was on under, assignment. How yeah, about that? Yeah, he's on assignment. I'm sure he'll the, check in any time now. Going to the bowl game. I think he will be next week, I think. I oh, okay. Know. I don't know. I'll check in with him. I mean, the game's on Monday, so I don't know what he can tell us next week after that. But Yeah, he really can't. <laughs> <laughs> I assume we're not doing a show Monday. Uh, New Year's uh, Day? Uh, no. Okay. No. There you go. Uh, and uh, Pat Hardy from HawkFanatic.com. Here he is. Take it away, Pat. Good morning. We go from Don Patterson and uh, Brad Heinrich. 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 I'm sorry. There's an S at the Heinrich end. is Heinrichs. Heinrich, I think is how you say it. Heinrichs. Like, to okay. nothing. We have no guest today. To no, this. No suitor. <laughs> nothing. Suitor cannot save us today. Yep. I did see the coordinators were doing their news conference this morning before I left. Including Checked Brian Ferentz? Brian was up there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they usually do it either the day before or... Um, the, well, this is two days, isn't it? No, this is, yeah, it's Monday. So I always thought they did it. No, then I think the day before they um, make the head coaches available. One, I mean, it's just play the damn game. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> I mean, no offense to the guys. There's, there's been there's been nothing really interesting down there. I just play the game. I mean, it'll be now if Brian Ferentz just goes off and says that he hopes Beth gets rots in hell. Then we'll have oh, I have not seen that yet. Today. <laughs> I'm ki- but that's not going to happen. I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I, um, I, um, I was wondering if he would. Yeah, the scoop. I, I was, well, they, it'd, be on, it'd be on Twitter in two seconds. Oh, yes. I mean, if Brian, if he farts today, it's going to be on Twitter. CNN would cut in, I think. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think CNN cares. No, maybe not. Um, but no, whatever, if he says anything that you're going to see guys on their phones racing to be the first one to get it up there on Twitter or the video, so people will go to them first because that's the world we live in. But I respect him for doing it. I think he could probably should, could have said no under the circumstances. I'm, there's probably a, a certain obligation you have when you agree to do a bowl game, so maybe that's part of it too. But it'll be interesting to see. Is he up there now? Um, he was up there when I right before I left for work. Try to like... see if you can find the Citrus Bowl website. I think they play that stuff live, and maybe we can hear him yeah. and just have him be our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask him questions and then say, why won't you answer me? <laughs> but it's either, it could be on YouTube. Maybe you might be able to find Citrus Bowl on YouTube. I don't know. Because I know Iowa will send the video because we've been posting the, um, all the video that they've sent. They've sent player and Kirk met with the media again yesterday and basically said the same stuff about Brian that he said on the 18th. Boy, their website has a lot of cheese that's all over it. Giant cheese its little cheese its yeah, and I've I've had cheese. They're okay. I mean, I I don't think I'd ever buy them. So cheese, it's, it's just all right. With it's you. just it's all right. Um, yeah. Oh, the Doobie Brothers. Do you like them? Cheese, it's yeah. okay, but yeah. I would never buy them. Have you found it? Is that you? Yeah, it's me. Is that yeah. your cell phone? Get off yeah. your phone. You're like a teenager. I was uh, posting uh, this. Uh, you're like a Taylor broadcast. Swift fan. <laughs> I am a Taylor Swift fan. I know, but you're like the 14 year olds that. <laughs> I... That unfortunately can't vote for. Her. No, I am, Isn't she uh, going to run for president? No. I've heard people say that she should run for president. Oh, no, she's a God. I mean, that's where we are, president. though. Yeah. I don't think she's old enough. She's 36, I think. I think she's just about old. No, she might only be 34. Don't you have to be 35? Uh, she's 34. Yeah. 34. No, you have to be 80. To Why run. do you know? Why do you know that? I just saw it on social 
I did okay. too. I did. I did too. Because that was, was it. Part because people were saying could she run for? Yeah. That was it. Okay. That's how. That's how. Just because hopeless. she tells people to vote. That's how hopeless we are. No, people are just looking for someone yeah. to cling to. Both yeah. sides. Why? Trump is the hero to the right, and now Taylor Swift is the hero to the left. I don't get it. I don't either. She's Why we have to have great Ida. entertainer? That's it. I like her for uh, what she does, philanthropic. That's great. I, yeah, but I don't but want I her mean, to be the president. Yeah. No. no. You have found anything? No, no, nothing live. I mean, it might be over. This was like maybe forty-five minutes ago. Well, here, let me look on clips um, on Twitter. Mick, uh, Mitch Fick from Channel Two. Was I want to see tweeting if, little videos and updates from it. Uh, yeah, let's see. Was there anything earth-shattering? No. I think we would have heard by now. Let me. Just he doesn't expect to make any changes at quarterback during the game. I don't know who asked him that, but. Well, that's a fair question. I put in my column that I hope that if Deacon is struggling, why not throw the freshman in for a series or two? Yeah, and he said that there was no, no, there were no okay, plays here's, for here's the a freshman. Quote. Brian Ferentz, probably what I resent the most about the situation is that the focus has come off of our players who have really accomplished some tremendous things, and it's gone on to things that just quite simply don't matter, that are trivial and silly. Okay, that that's him deflecting the attention away from him to the players, which, you know, I admire yeah. him for that. Brian Ferentz says he expects Deacon Hill to go the distance at quarterback, not expecting Marco Leonese to play any series. That's I, when I, I just don't get that. I just and it's almost like he announces that with pride, like he he knows it's going to piss off the fans. If Deacon Hill is stinking up the place, why not throw the kid in? I just don't get it. I don't get their logic on this. I don't. I, I just don't get it. Now, if Deacon Hill gets hurt, Marco Lane is going to go in there. And he hasn't played a snap this year. I just that's one of the things I don't get with Kirk is his handling of quarterbacks. But obviously I was looking I don't um, Trent, let me see if there's any other this was the Gazette guy. See if there's any other I mean, you were said you were following who was it? Mitch uh, Mitch Fick from Channel Two is doing and a lot he, of he didn't tweet anything. Oh, Brian was, Ferentz is number one tr- tr- God, I called it up, and the first thing to come up was some story I wrote three days ago. <laughs> Brian Ferentz speaks with the media for the first time since the announcement. Okay, there's a picture of him drinking a cup of coffee. Um, so, do see. they normally do the offensive and defensive coordinators yes. same day? Yes. Okay. Hawkeyes went to send Brian. Oh, here's here's some earth shattering news. Hawkeyes want to send Brian Ferentz off on a high note. <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, I'd be surprised by the opposite. <laughs> that would be news. Yeah, we yeah. Want, well, we would really we want to tank this thing for we're this. We're hoping SOB. to stink this joint up, man. <laughs> Send that clown out with what he deserves. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. There's this one. Uh, this guy sort of does look like Brian Ferris, but not that. Okay, now it's just it's these posts have just regressed to just Twitter nonsense. Yeah. M- Okay, here's something from Docterman. Brian Ferentz, Deacon has played really good football for us while referring to a quarterback with a quarterback rating of 22.5 and has more interception. Than so Docterman's basically calling out Brian. Because, and you know, nothing against Deacon Hill, but he has not played really good football for him. He just hasn't. Uh-uh. And they they shove that down our throats and want fans to buy that, and that's that's where I have problems with the what they're doing with the offense i wrote a column yesterday saying i hope brian ferns comes out and throws caution to the winners he has nothing to lose besides a game his job's already done right but he's not gonna be able to convince his father to think i it's gonna be more of the same I, I just listed all these things that i hope happen like if they throw an incompletion on first down i hope for i hope they don't automatically run it on second down which they almost always do but i know it's all going to fall on deaf ears they're going to be They've had a month to prepare. I just I don't want them to come out and throw 50 and be a spread offense. That's not realistic. I just want them to be more aggressive. I want them to take some chances. Don Patterson says that every Monday on this show. And I'm worried they're going to play not to lose and be paranoid about turnovers. And we'll see. I mean, they're playing a Tennessee team that's a shell of itself. I mean, they've lost so many players on both sides of the ball. I mean, I'm surprised. I don't know what the spread is now. Do we know what the most recent spread is? Hey, I know it changed, but I didn't see what it changed, too, because my dad texted me to tell my brother because he's – Usually betting on these things. Well, I mean, I'd, God, I would hope it would change. I mean, it was at one point, wasn't it, like eight and a half Tennessee? Um, was it that much? I was thought it? it was. I thought it was that. But I would think since they've lost six defensive backs, their top two running backs, and their starting quarterback, that that maybe it would shrink a little bit. I mean, that's a lot to be taken yeah. off a football team. You know, I'm going to Google it right now and see what the spread is. But, you know, and then if you're, you're Marco Lane as you're going into this game, you hear your offensive coordinator say, hey, under no circumstance will we use our backup quarterback. It just doesn't make sense to me. 
And Les Leonez has been so bad in practice to where they have no faith in him. And if that's the case, then you got a problem. Well, I, and I just can't imagine he's been any worse than what we've seen Deacon be in games. I just, I just don't get – they dig their heels in on certain things that don't make sense. According to this, 22 hours ago, six and a half points for Tennessee. Okay, so it's gone down. Because I believe it was eight and a half at one time. Uh, yeah, it says – well, it says it opened at seven and a half. But Let's see. This it. is according to Google, the Action Network. Okay, okay. So no, there doesn't look doesn't look like there was anything. Hello. Hello. I got a question for Pat. Yeah. Uh, um, I see where the Utah quarterback played the, in the bowl game, and he was in the porthole. Is that just something that is different for every conference or every team? So he entered the he entered the portal, but he still played. You can play. I mean, if you're, it's up to the, okay. it's up to the current team. And I believe their number one quarterback, that right, his last name, he's been out for a while. So whoever played, I don't believe it was the rising guy, their star quarterback. He's been injured for a while, if I remember oh. correctly. They're making a big deal about this guy was was in the portal, and he was. Well, yeah, I mean, the Minnesota quarterback was God. in the portal. The Minnesota quarterback was in the portal, and he came back to play this last game for him in the because oh, okay. they didn't have another quarterback. Because everybody else had left. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, they need yeah, to. They need to change this. They need to move the portal date, open window back. It's ridiculous to have it in December, prior to these bowl games, because it just creates chaos. Yes, make it right after the championship game. Yes, that's what I yeah. think they should do. So, yeah, but we'll see. And I think the NCAA should have made it. You could do it once instead of just leaving it being open, wide open like it is. Yeah, I mean. Well, I believe now you can get one free transfer, but if you do a second transfer, you have to sit out. I think that I think that's the new rule, I believe. But it's so hard. I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I think they are putting some limitations on it, but I still think we need to get a little more space from COVID. Once we get yeah. through this senior class, the class that now the twenty twenty one, the class that came in, Caitlin Clark's year, they're the last ones impacted by COVID. Once we get past this class, because it seems like everybody has another year of eligibility left yeah. now. It just well, COVID yeah. and and then the. Nick Jackson thing's unique in the fact that they 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 didn't play their last two games last year because of the murders, the three players that yeah. got murdered, and he graduated. That's why he was granted a waiver in that he had the murders that cost him two games, and he had graduated in time, and that's why. But he hasn't said for sure if he's coming back yet. At least I haven't seen that. Yeah, I haven't either and stuff. And one more thing, Pat, away from football in Iowa for a minute. The Quad City Times did an article on your favorite frozen pizza company today. Oh, um, Mama Bossa's? Mama Bossa's, What'd they yeah. say about him? Yes, how it's been going on for a long time and how they do it all. I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'll have to check it out. Thank you. Thank you for heads up. Yeah. I'll read that. Okay. Like I said, not a frozen pizza fan unless it's Mama Bossa's. Yeah. By, by far the best. Yeah, I agree. I like them. Yeah. I, it doesn't taste like frozen pizza. It really doesn't when you eat it. It's, no, it doesn't. It's, it's they do a good. good job. They do. And stuff. And then um, you're talking about the spread. Mm -hmm. It's it's down to six now. Okay. And the over under went up to thirty six. Okay. Wow, that's a lot for Iowa game. That is. Yeah, I took I took the points. I took the the under, and I also took Iowa to score over two and a half the first quarter and over two and a half the second half. Okay. I'm really going to, all right, that'll be interesting. Yeah, I don't see Iowa scoring more than 15, 20 points in this game, but who knows? No. Bowl games can be strange. Oh, it's, it's, it's all, all in fun. I don't, you know, it's they're $2 bets. They're not crazy bets, you know. Okay. Well, good luck with those. They're just fun to do. Okay. And it keeps your interest in, the, in some of these games that get, monotonous sometimes no you're right about that yeah. little yeah. competition oh. okay okay thanks for the call yeah thanks appreciate it yep, we'll talk to you guys later have a good day and go hawks all right go hawks. i'll have to read that article i did enjoy his pronunciation of portal <laughs> porthole i'll have to go and read that mama basso article i'm curious to see because like i said it is really good frozen pizza it is good i, I haven't mean, eaten it much lately because mama be basso in the quad cities was i'd love to have it fresh i mean is there a is there a mama basso restaurant in the quad there city? was i don't know if they're still you know, i could only imagine how good it is fresh because like you said it's lights out for pascali's just started a like a thin crust that i like really it's pretty well, good and i'm a guy i am not a frozen pizza fan by any means i, I don't have I, it very often. All, I just think they all taste alike 
Yeah. For most of them. Suter's always raving about Tombstone is disgusting. Yeah. It's like eating cardboard. They don't advertise with you, do they, Captain? No. Yes. They just oh, big ad, yeah. Greatest frozen. <laughs> yeah, the greatest Walker frozen went out and got that one. pizza ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. The preferred frozen pizza. <laughs> of the Iowa Hawkeyes. <laughs> yeah. No, that was um, Palermo's. Palermo's, right? I've had that before. It's. I, uh, Why would they prefer it? Over Mama Basso. Or, or over. I just like that it's preferred. It's not the official. Yeah. It's like, well, we might eat something else. If it's, but if that's all you got, I mean, that's what we're going to have. You think like recruits? Well, hey, I mean, if you give me access to Palermo's frozen pizza, I'll, I'm coming here. I'm signing on the bottom line. Maybe that's what they use. So, Well, they get those, what are they called, the black and gold cards or gold cards they use at Hy-Vee to buy their food and stuff? Yeah, I, I, I've never seen them. I wonder if they one, get but, like, a bonus, like something off for the Palermo's. Like, but oh, why they do, got a discount. But they don't, like the football players don't need, they get three, they get round meals 24 hours a day at the football. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner now. They don't need they just eat at the at the facility, and it is good food. We've had it before. Every once in a while, they've treated the media to, and it's good food. It's good at any type of stuff you want. It's amazing how much training table has. There's a reporter's training table. Well, they've every once in a while. They haven't done it lately. I like to think of that. But every once in a while, they've had us over first, and we've been able to eat the food that they offer training. And no, it's good. I mean, it's it's a it's a well-rounded diet. Put it that way. Steve had to go out and take care of business. I had to take care of some business. We thought, oh, we, thought we were worried. Yeah. yeah, what's going on? Yeah, what's up? Uh, we just had a political buy. Oh, okay. Which you're going to have to. Yeah, I got to scan it in. A political what? Yeah. Political buy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trump? Uh, same thing. No, it goes against the, the They rip uh, Haley apart. Oh, is it a new one for, for anti-Haley? It's the same one. Oh, okay. So who's, a... who's, is it Trump's people paying for it? It's a, technically a political action committee. Probably. Where they don't have to save okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, right. Yeah. So. God, I'm so They're sick not of the allowed to. Yeah, really. Well, I'm we only got, what, a week so or two left until the caucuses, and then we don't have now, to worry about it for a while? If they were buying time for Hawk Fanatic and wanting to, you know, put an ad up on our site or do something on our podcast, that'd be different. But they're not, so I'm, I'm going to rip them. I'm tired of it. And we still got <laughs> 10 months left. No, it gets – well, I think it, the ad is just – I don't care for it, but got to carry it. Yeah, no, it's money. Yeah. I get it. You well, know. it isn't just money. It's the law. Really? We you can't, yeah. turn down yeah, you can't turn down political ads. We cannot turn down political ads no matter what they say. Huh. Now, that's, you know, if we put, uh, like, a client on, like Mama Basso. Yeah. And we say Mama Basso. Tombstone. Or he's one of our actual clients. Yeah. Tombstone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and says so Tombstone Pizza Cures Cancer. Um, well, we can't run that. Okay. Because that goes against the FCC with the F. Uh, TC, and so you can't run that. You can get fined big time for running something like that. But if uh, uh, Donald Trump says, <clears throat> if I'm elected, I'm going to cure cancer. Some, a lot, I'm guessing 20 to 30 million in this country would believe him. Yeah, yeah and you, you have to run it. If he says the F word, which, you know, if you've read his rants lately, he's coming pretty close. I have not yeah. read his rants lately. I've yeah. tried to just block him out. He but... said a rot in hell. I saw that. Yeah. I, I but, saw... I mean, he could say the F word, and we got to run it, suppose. Yeah. And I saw the Haley thing. I, her answer was ridiculous, yeah. and her, yeah. you know, she's trying to do damage control the next day. But what a moron. Just say slavery. She's, I, I mean, if she's worried about offending her base. And well, then... she's worried about offending Trump's base. Well, that's her base. Yeah, well. That's their party. Yeah. Trump's base is the same base yeah. she's trying to yeah. win over. So, and that was obvious in that regard. So, I mean, it's just, then you see all these stupid arguments, the the unhinged right-wingers, you know, they talk about, people are aware that in the mid, what was, with the Civil Rights Act, the yeah. party switched. Yeah. Everything switched. Like in the 60s, right? Everything switched, yeah. you know. Yes, the Democrats were the slaveholders back in the Civil War days, but things have changed since then, and it's just amazing what goes. I mean, Twitter is such a cesspool. Yeah. And now that idiot, some right wing guy, had some thought he was owning the libs. He had a picture of the Statue of Liberty. Did you see that? I think his name's no. Jesse Kelly. He's he's on like Newsmax or I mean, he's Jesse Waters. No, Jesse oh. Kelly. I think he tweeted something about the Statue of Liberty being an example of why the best things. 
are made in America. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and he just got attacked. I mean, well, he should. Yeah. But now he's saying he was joking, which he wasn't. No. He was trying to. He was trying to own the opposition, and he just made a complete <laughs> ass out of himself. I learned that it was from France when I was like two. I know. Everybody knows. That. Yeah, everybody. Well, knows. not everybody, but unfortunately. But I saw that. I'm like, good grief. This this platform just, and like I you said, know, it's another year, and I get so sick of it's very seriously, uh, you know, coming in, and it, it, the news is that's the news, and you just get I just get tired of starting my day with that, but we got to people listen for the news, sure, and like on my TV, I guess on everybody's TV, I see more anti Haley ads right now than everything than anything. Yeah. I see a lot of anti DeSantis. I see some of those. Like man, I, I think they're more worried about yeah, Haley. Yeah, they're more worried about Haley. So yeah, they should be. So you, you see more of her. Well, if Haley got elected, I'm not I know, but her that. answer the other day was just ridiculous. Yeah. It was just stupid. Yeah. I mean, why not just say it and, you know, I mean, if, she, if I don't know. I mean, I'm just amazed that we're where we are. Yeah, another year. What bothers you more, that we're there politically or that Brian Ferentz says that they're not going to even consider making a change at quarterback, even if. Well, yeah. that's troubling. <laughs> it's a little troubling. But not surprising. But not surprising. <laughs> but troubling. But troubling. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Like I said, I just don't. Do you have... think Brian's found a landing spot? You think he's got a job idea? Like, uh, um, I don't know if he's got it officially, but he'll find somewhere. Okay. I, my, my well, that's what I'm thinking is maybe he already knows con- where he's going, but he's not saying. Well, his, and he may. He might. Yeah. With his father's connections, and you know, Brian can think for himself too. And like I said, he has shown that he can be a good position coach. I think he could coach tight ends or the offensive line in the NFL and be just fine. And that's what I think eventually he will do. I'd be surprised if he stayed in college, but you never say never. Well, Belichick likes him, and that he's well, probably going to be making some changes on that staff. Well, Belichick's going to be the change on that staff. I think he's done after this year. Oh, okay. From what I'm hearing. I mean, but what's funny, though, is somebody sent me a story, badgernotes.com. Some guy, I can't remember the kid's name. He looks like he's about 12. But he wrote a story yesterday or two days ago saying that Paul Christ is no longer a finalist for the Iowa coordinator job because, according to his good source, Joe Philbin's already accepted the job. This is just a story that's just out there in Wisconsin. So I had some guy who say, what do you th-? I'm like, well, that, we'll see. I go, I, I haven't said that. But then there's other people saying that they, they're hearing that Paul Christ is the guy, blah, blah, blah. What I will say, and I'll speak for all the Iowa media, none of us know officially what's going on. None of us do. We can guess, we can speculate, we can talk about what we've heard. I've we heard can some, get off the air but none after of us only know. being on pe- for pe- two and a half hours. Time's well, been off for a half hour. People now. could say that they, I mean, these people that do their nightly updates and hey, here's what I'm, it's just a lot of, a lot of it is just, clicks. they just want clicks and attention. Yeah. I mean, I mean a lot, I mean, like the Scott Frost crap, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, but nobody know. knows officially what's going on, but besides Kirk and maybe couple people really close to Kirk and the people Kirk is talking to. I love uh, the people at Channel 6 in Omaha, the, especially, the, and I can't remember his name, the lead sportscaster, who just was kissing the ass of Scott Frost when he first came there. And now, anytime he mentions Scott Frost, it's so negative, and he mentions him about as often as I mentioned Todd. Uh, <laughs> he, he just... Well, I mean, there's some people that... It's like I, our Alford. Yes, I was just going to say, it's yeah. the same exact same thing with Alford. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Good morning, guys. Morning. Hey, got a quick question. Who's been coaching Iowa's tight ends the last several years? That's Abdul been, Hodge. Is, Abdul Hodge. Yep. Okay, that was my question. Thank oh, you. You bet. Wow, I knew, so. I knew an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle easy questions like that. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, Abdul Hodge has been coaching the tight end. I believe this is either his second or third year. Liddell Betts is coaching the running back, Kilton Copeland, the receivers. And, um, and, and unfortunately, the, <laughs> well, the tight ends have played well. And I think the running backs, when they're healthy and have it somewhere to run, have played well. The offensive line has been very shaky, and quarterback play has been very below average. Hello. Hey, guys. Um, Pat, you mentioned yesterday, a deal about how did uh, Kansas go from, you know, terrible to offensively to just what they were doing the other night. Mm -hmm. And another team that was uh, 
down their ways and just was not good and then just came out of nowhere with with receivers and whatnot was Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, they were bad a couple I mean, years ago. And, uh, I mean, that shows that it can be done. Or whoever's evaluating or coaching certain position deals, you know, certain positions and, uh, I guess, recruiting and evaluating these kids, something's not going on here. Well, they're obviously you, not. It can be done that fast at those places. I mean, they're obviously not developing quarterbacks right now at the rate you would like. And I think some of it is just the offense is just so predictable in so many ways. It's just, yeah, it's just not working right now. It's just not working. I don't know if Paul Christ or Joe Philbin, if they're chosen, I don't know how much they're going to be able to fix things because there's only going to be a limit to what there's going to be a limit to what they can do. Because I just think Kirk is locked in on we're going to make this work the way it is instead of changing. Do you do you think? Because and I know you don't. A lot of people don't like all these games, but I, I've watched almost all the bowl games and whatnot. And you see so many teams like attacking the middle of the field, 20, 30 yards. Is that just, do you think it's quarterback that can't do it, get the ball there, or receivers that can't get open down there? What, what I do think it's think a combination. There? I mean, from listening to Don Patterson give his analysis this year, he has talked about Deacon has to be more accurate, has to throw with more touch, but he's also talked about the receivers have to run better routes, have to get a better job of separation. I think it's all that stuff is happening. And then I think it's also happening in an offense that I don't want to say it's archaic or dated, but it's this archaic offense, and dated. it's yeah. pretty, I mean, yeah, it, not a lot of change has happened. I think it's a perfect storm for mediocrity or worse. Okay. I just, man, cause it's, uh, when you watch all these games and, and well, even regular season or these bowl games, it's like when you watch this and I, I don't know if I would say dated because, I'm mean, like predictability and just like, um, like the, the routes that the receivers run. And when, when we have a fullback in the game and we run the ball and, you know, two tight ends is like, you know, like you said, you and a guy sat up there and you said your buddy called every play. Well, whenever they, they throw an incompletion on first down, almost always they run the, run the ball on second down. Dallas was the one, Dallas Jones was actually the one who kind of, Started noticing that during this season. He'd always, hey, they, for incomplete first down, sure enough, zone stretch play on second down. It almost always happens. So if we can pick that up in the press box, I'm guessing other defenses are picking that up too. And they're not good enough talent wise to be predictable. Some teams are. Iowa's not. A um, couple other things. One, uh, the kid that's leaving USC, there was a deal on, um, on, uh, a website that is coming out that he he had a million dollars before he threw a pass at USC. This Nelson kid, that's yeah, Malachi, the yeah, he was a, yeah, he was a five star recruit out of Southern California. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I don't know where's he going. There's, do you know, I I haven't heard nothing. But my question is, when are we going to start seeing? Because this was brought up that he was given that money and given money and whatnot and hadn't done anything, and now he's going to transfer out. Now there's going to be a lawsuit for millions against him. Well, that's just, the, that, the, yeah, that's what's going to start. Stuff like that's going to start happening now. We're, remember, we're still in the early stages of this stuff, but that's going to be one of the fallouts from this portal stuff. They shouldn't have given him all that money prior to coming there. That's not what it's designed for. And now, yeah, and, and now, they want their, now they want their money back. But, you know, it's going to be tough for them to get it because they're, you know, I mean, nobody forced them to give that kid that money. You know, so and I'm sure that 19 year old was responsible with it. He's probably got it off most of it. Too. Well, like I said, though, this is gonna more. You're gonna see more cases like that. All right, guys, have a good one. Yep. Me too. Why did you try to call me? I hit the wrong thing. Okay. I was uh, doing the scheduling. Yes, we want. Okay. That yeah. Yeah. He was trying yeah. to text me. He accidentally called me. It threw yeah. me off. Yes. Well, I sent. <clears throat> sent yeah, I got your message. Well, and then I sent the message on. Oh, okay. So. Put your phone down. You, you can you can rig I don't your, look, look, I got a pen. They showed a picture of fans watching a Laker game in 2001. Yeah. And everyone was watching. They showed a picture of fans watching a Laker game in 2022. Everybody had their freaking cell phones right in their face. And there was another one. It was interesting. I don't know where some camera was above two people, two couples eating at a restaurant. The one couple where they were conversing and having the best time. The other couple, all they were doing was 
eating, paying no attention to each other, and yeah. they were just on their phone. They don't like each other. Yeah, but it's just amazing what cell phones have taken over our lives. They really have. I mean, I'm, I, I, would be, I would be uncomfortable yeah. without my cell phone. I think phone. the husband of that commercial was writing, hey, Hardy, you suck. Yeah, very well. <laughs> but I, like I said, I'm not a big cell but, I mean, we become so dependent on yeah. our cell phones. Well, it's better than me uh, yelling, hey, I want this to, you know. Um, yeah. This, this stuff comes up. There you go. I'm, it's the I'm multitasking. I'm managing. and Heavy is the, the weight and, on the crown or whatever. Well, my head hurts. So well, something, yeah, there you something go. Is, yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff happening. Heavy. Just I saw the greatest movie last night. Water did you Horse? Ever see, no, Absence of Malice. Did you ever see that? Yeah, like 40 years ago. It was on again last night. Yeah, yeah was, that's Paul Newman, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's it's not describe this show. Wasn't he the 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 alcoholic lawyer? No, you're thinking. Uh, no, you're thinking of another great. Was uh, that the movie. verdict? Verdict. Okay, that is a great. But yeah, no, I've too. seen both of those. Yeah, Water Horse still better than both. Crusoe, that was the name of the Water Horse. Yeah. Hello, hello. Um, who, who do you what do you you guys think Iowa State can win their game today? I'm sure there's a chance. That's yeah. Yeah. Which bowl are they in? Music City. They're playing Memphis, aren't they? In the Memphis, yeah. 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 You got a home. There's not Memphis. a pop tart or a cheese involved. I'm out. Or mayo. <laughs> oh, pop tart! There, they had a giant pop tart that was last great. night. They that were was good. Yeah, pop. I don't uh, mind pop tarts. Oh, good. I pop tarts are great. I don't eat them much, but awful. I don't. I don't hate them. Like I you think do. they're awful. Yeah, no, what? I don't mind them. Not, yeah, they suck. No, I don't mind a pop tart. You no, put it in the you're thinking of okay. toaster strudels. No. I've had those two. Those aren't bad either. I don't eat them much. Uh, though. I, no, pop tarts are great, but I just don't eat them very much. But Sucker-ama. And how is Iowa? The men gonna do tonight? Well, they better win. Yeah, they better <laughs> win this game. If they don't win this game, then we got problems. I'm right, interested in what the ticket sales gonna be like. Non-television. Do you think there'll game? be a lot of people there tonight? No. Especially because of the snow. No, no, I don't think the snow. Uh, the Friday night, six o'clock. No, there's no more snow, and the roads are clear. roads are fine. I yeah. just, I, I'm guessing they'll be between six and nine. I think there'll be more locals because there's no high school games tonight. That could help, and that the six help. o'clock thing might help some, but it also may deter some from you. They just can't get there in time. But uh, six o'clock's an unusual time. But no, I don't think it will be anywhere close to being full. I was thinking of going over, but my brother told me no. I would. Sp- no offense, Carm, but the way you sound, I'd give it a little couple more days. Yeah. yeah. Are you taking yeah. anything? Pardon? Are you taking any medication? No. Well, no. I'm just. I just have some inhalers. I find that night. I find it hard to sleep because I have trouble breathing when I'm laying down. Mm-hmm. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just. I'd wait a few more days. That's what he told me. He said. Otherwise, you may end up having lots of problems. Yeah. Now, I was exposed to somebody yesterday who has COVID. So does that mean I, I'm supposed to go get my blood, to, you know, do a blood thing today? I'm in and out. Do I need to let them know before I go up there? Are they going to tell me you can't come up here? Are you doing a blood thing? Well, I'm, just getting, I'm just getting, it's the last part of my physical. When I got my physical done, I had eaten well, with you it. You have to tell them. They'll ask you. So then that means they're not. They're going to tell me you're going to have to wait till next week. To well, I don't know about that, but they will ask because I feel fine, and I was around this person for like ten minutes. No, they will ask you. They'll I'll say, just call. Have them. you been around? Yeah. My guess is they're going to tell me to wait and come in next week, then right, like next Tuesday or Wednesday, because I feel fine. I didn't. I mean, I've had my boosters, but all right, I'll call them after I, because um, my neighbor has it too, and I've been around her a couple. But I feel fine. Yeah. But you say I should probably call them when I get off. I would or either that or when you go there, they're going to say, "Have you been around anybody? Have you had COVID?" And then or if have I've been around, and then I'm saying, "Well, I don't know if I've had COVID. I feel fine, but I've been around a couple of people." Then they're going to tell me to leave, right? Yeah, you're going to, yeah. And then you'll then I'll have to push my blood test back another week. Not that I, you know. I think they will say a pox on you, and Ooh. then they'll ask you to leave. And then if you don't leave, they'll shoot you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> car, car turns it violent. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, well, I, when I'm done here. Yeah, it's, I'm going in. I had all my physical, but I had eaten within eight hours. So it's literally, I'm going to be in there. They said a minute and a half, two yeah. minutes. They, sh- You know, it, then you're They'll gone. ask him. I, yeah, don't know that they'll, I don't know that they'll. I'll call them and let them know. It. Just to be safe, I'll call yeah. them when I get out of here. So, yeah. Well, Carl, no, I would stay away for. What do you expect the women to do tomorrow? Win. 
I don't even know who they play, but I expect. Oh, they play no, Minnesota. They play Minnesota. Yeah, Susan Harmon. I'm going to post it here this afternoon. She's got a. She interviewed Monica Susano's sister. She's got a good story. She plays for Minnesota. I'll be posting that on Hawk Fanatic here shortly after the new. How hour. good is Minnesota? Well, I, they're better this year. I um I think look at, can look up their record time. I can look that. Up. I thought I may have read that they're like having a really good year, but I could be mixed up with something else. But I thought I saw in her advance that they're having. Well, they said they're stronger this year than they have been. Yeah, and I thought, man, did I? I thought maybe I saw that they'd only lost one or two games, but I could be getting that mixed up with another team. I will be pulling up the game notes here on the web that is now a lot faster, thanks to our friends at Sharon Telephone. Oh, uh, we're here. Minnesota's eleven and one, That's one right, okay. in the Big Ten. Yeah, so yeah, they're. They're having a good year. I still think Iowa will win, and Caitlin will score between 30 and 40. First-year coach, Don Pli- Plizewitz. That's right. They do have a new coach now. The, the the former Minnesota star player, I can't remember her name, the former guard for them. Says she, here Don Plizewitz or Plitz-Uwitz? I have no idea. I have no idea how to pronounce that. But there they go, Karn, 11 and 1. So Yep. So, yeah, pretty good team. Okay, do Well, we better beat them. Yep. That'll be on TV. Okay, well, you guys have a good day. Take right. care. Yeah. Bye. It's one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, she's still not sounding good. Yeah. Now there's a lot of stuff she would have gone to. I mean, you got the soldier salute at Extreme Arena with the men's and women's wrestling teams. I know what it's like to not be able to sleep. Yeah. Chan won't but keep there's a lot of COVID. There's a lot of COVID going around. Yeah. So Chan won't keep her hands off me. That was. I know it's hard to sleep. I don't think we need to hear that. We don't need to go there. Jan doesn't deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my friends told her. Yeah, she, does not, <laughs> she does not deserve that. You can answer this? Maybe. Save us, please. You're not the boss of me. Please answer this. God, Hello. I'm begging. For, oh, we're begging for phone calls. That's where we are now. Yeah. Hello. Pat, is there any updates on the women's basketball girl that was in that accident? How's she doing and stuff? I haven't. Um, I know. I haven't well, seen she, any. She's on Instagram, and I've seen just her doing stuff, but I haven't seen her like. Oh, you're talking about Ava Jones? Yeah. I mean, I yeah. saw her, like, when they had the dogs that visited practice, she was there hugging them. And she's there, but she's not anywhere close to playing, if that's where you're wondering. No. I don't know if she'll ever be able to play at this level again. But she's on scholarship. She's with the team. Every picture I've seen of her, she looks happy and smiling, and she's moving on with her life as tough as it's been, from what I can tell. Thanks. Yeah, but I haven't seen anyone write about her. No. Um since she's been here, I mean, she's been here for a semester. Yeah, I mean, but she's on Instagram. But yeah, yeah. and she. But like yeah, I said, I've seen a couple times. I'm like, who? Oh, that's Ava. Like yeah. they had uh, both teams had dogs come and visit. Did you see that? Yeah. They showed the dogs out on the yeah. court, hugging them it's and like whatever. The dogs they use at the children's hospital. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was pretty cool. I yeah. like seeing that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. I like seeing dogs happy. There's nothing better than a happy dog. Yeah. Can we agree on that? Yes. You think that's Wopsy's okay. happy right now without Tom and Ann? Is Molly able to fill that void? No, she's feeding her as scotch. Long as, you feed, as long as you feed her, that's... <laughs> feeding her scotch. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're the one bringing... Neither one of us had brought up alcohol. No. Neither one of us. We And you're the one going down, opening up that door. So now, we do we kick it in? No. That's already open. No, I think... We Are they in Florida leave. now? Or did they leave no, today? I think or? they're flying. This, I, don't re- I don't know. Flying this morning or something. And I they're back... Know. What early February is when they're back? March. March. This is a no. This is a short one. They'll be back. You'll no, be back, back with him on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is short. I yeah. think he's back to work on Tuesday. Yeah. Wow, that's one of the shortest trips they've ever yeah. taken. Yeah, I know. They have friends or relatives or something down there that we stay with. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, like I said, it's um, the game is at noon on Monday. I'm to the point now. Just play the damn thing. I mean, I just. <laughs> I, well, it's it's pretty cool. Their uh, direct TV uh, is having a fight with uh, Tegna stations like uh, Channel Eight in the Quad Cities. They won't Channel they, Five in Des Moines. Fa- yeah, and they are not going to have the game on it. So ABC put it on all their other. Yeah, it's things. ESPN Plus, ESPN Three, which is like just it's streaming it. You gotta get it off their website, off their yeah. app. Yeah, <laughs> they're just making it available everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you can see the game. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. That is a good idea. That's where stuff like that comes in handy. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking to see if there's any more updates from the 
from the press conference, and the first thing that comes up on my Twitter thing is something called Fascinating, and it's a picture of Ted Bundy with his girlfriend in front of a fireplace in 1974 at a Utah <laughs> ski resort. God, I love X. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I'm, just a, it's, it's a, it's a freaking mess. It's an S show. I know I can't say that on the air. but And it, I it, have got, you know, I, I've got so many ridiculous left-wing Crap. Oh, I get that left wing image it's too. Just, I block the Crassettes. It, I'm just well. Sick I haven't of them. seen them in a while, but I've seen this weird crap, and I don't know. I, it's really, it seriously is kind of worthless. The only There's reason JoJo from Jersey, some she's kind yeah. of attractive, tired of her stuff. All she does is get on every day and just obsess over Donald Trump. I mean, get a life. And I'm getting she's all, probably getting paid for all this. these followers Ooh. now, on, and I never got this before. All these followers on Twitter uh, that are, you know, having their boobs all Oh, yeah, I got a bunch out. of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of those, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a ton of they boobs. Haven't tweeted anything. They just, yeah. 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 Haven't tweeted. Don't have any followers. <laughs> nope. <laughs> just <laughs> boobs. A lot of <laughs> what a lot that? of letters and numbers in a row. Yeah. That aren't like words. Yeah. But so. it doesn't look like much... Came out of the Brian Ferentz thing today, and nobody's. Um, well, here I got. I'll, what is it? Do you get six out of ten? Six out of ten. Can you kick? Yeah. What did it mean to win this game? Uh, well, you know, I think the the emotion of the Illinois game was quite simply that uh, you know these guys, these players, they set a goal at the beginning of the season, uh, and that was to win the Big Ten. You know, fortunately, we came up short in that regard. Uh, but but the best we could do at the time was win the Big Ten West and give ourselves a chance to do that. Uh, in order to, to do that, we need to beat Illinois, but we won that game. Um, I think the emotion that you saw with everyone on the sideline was uh, you saw a bunch of players that worked really hard and accomplished their goals. And, you know, quite frankly, um, probably what I resent the most about this situation is that the focus has come off of our football players who have really accomplished some tremendous things this year. Um, and it's gone on to things that just quite simply don't matter. They're trivial and silly, um, in my opinion. And, you know, for whatever reason, the focus has gone there. Uh, instead of, of, of on a bunch of players who've worked really hard, overcome a lot of adversity and dealt with a lot of nonsense uh, to win 10 football games and put themselves in a position to win the 11th, which I think would be the fourth time in the history of the school that that's happened. So, um, you know, I, quite frankly, I think that's where the focus should be. That's where I'd like it to be. Um, I can't control what, what you guys do or what other people say, um, but, but I think we're really missing something. It's, it's pretty special that's going on. I mean, I have um, kind of mixed feelings about that. Um, whether he wants to admit his situation is news, it's yeah. it's a story. It's what people are interested in. Trust me, I can tell. I write something about Brian Ferentz, it gets tons of page views. And we have not neglected the players. We've written a lot of good stuff about the players. Tory Taylor, I mean... But you have to do both. But I also get Brian's trying to deflect the attention away from him. I get that. I, I figured that's what he would do. That's something his father would do. But to him, for him to call the other stuff silly and trivial, I disagree with that. His situation is not silly and trivial. I mean, it's a very unique situation. You've got a father and son working together in a situation where it doesn't happen very much. The father makes $7.5 million. The son makes almost a million a year. He was forced to resign. I mean, there's this is a big story. Oh, whether, it's a huge whether story. Whether he wants to admit it or not, but I get where he's coming from. He's trying to downplay his angle, but sorry, that's just it's gonna I guarantee that you don't think it's that T V broadcast like, on Monday. What do you think that T V broadcast is? Do you think they're gonna be showing him at all? Of course they are. They're gonna beat it like a dead horse. It, it's kinda like that statement's kinda like Haley trying to do damage control. Mm-hmm when you should just not do any, you know. You, th- yeah, I mean, this, to say that it's silly and trivial, that's kind of a the shot. Offense the offense is what the offense was and his role in it. And yeah. and it is news. It's well, big news. Yeah. It's big news. I mean, I, this is one of the bigger stories that in all my years of covering Hawkeye sports, I mean, the son of the head coach gets fired by an interim AD who's barely been there two years. And, but and she, part of that, you know, is that she's a woman. Of course. Yeah. Or as some of the people on Twitter said, a dumb blonde. Yeah, well, I've gotten that she's a dumb blonde. Yeah, well, Jesus Christ. Who should stay in her lane is the, a lot of 
a lot of what I've gotten from a certain faction of the Hawkeye fan base. Yeah, stay, what does that mean, I, stay in her lane? In the kitchen, I think it means, uh, you know? I mean, but that's the only way I can interpret it. I don't agree with the way it was handled. I do agree that something had to be done with the offense. I don't know if it's going to help anything. I don't. I think that if they would have waited, something still would have been done. Yeah, or they could have kept it. They could have kept it between themselves. Yeah, I think they could have, because if you notice, Kirk's keeping this search be- yeah. between himself. Because, like I said, you've got a bunch of media people wanting to convince people that they know what's going on. None of us know for sure what's going on. None okay, of us. Say, let's just say they had to appease donors. They could have said to the donors. We're going to do this. We're going to do it at the end. So let's so just we can be keep quiet the focus on the it. team. Yes, that's what I think they should have done. Yeah, if they had to appease donors. Yes, and I do think that was part of it. Yeah, and I'm guessing there were probably some big donors that are okay with Brian because they love Kirk. I mean, Kirk's got a strong oh, yeah. following of people here. I mean, you can. I mean, anytime something comes up, there's a lot of people that are ready to go to bat for Kirk, and that's fine. But something has to be done with the offense. And it's just funny, though, that you got a Wisconsin website that's reporting that it's Philbin's job and that Chris is no – but this story was funny. It said they had written a story last week saying that Chris was a finalist. Kirk hasn't announced any finalists. There's not going to be finalists for this job. We're just going to suddenly find out one day they're going to announce who it is. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. I mean, Kirk doesn't announce finalists, but it just shows you, though, there's just so many people that just – are trying to gain attention and clicks from this story. I just find it funny, though, that some are saying that it's Philbin's job. Others are saying it's Chris' job. Nobody knows for sure. I think it is still going to be one of those two. And like I said before, I would love to be wrong. And I will gladly admit I'm wrong if I'm wrong. And I'm still leaning slightly towards Philbin than Chris. But I don't know. I mean, just like nobody else in the media knows. Only Kirk and the few people that he's reaching out and talking to know what's there going on. There was one good tweet I saw where... Uh... Philbin's got the job, and it was a picture of Regis Philbin. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a kick out of that. Do they spell their last names? I think they do. P H I L B I N. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, just just somebody bringing it on Twitter. Was that what it was? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I got a kick out All those of gifts and stuff. I mean, <laughs> I, I like the people that fire back at you with a gift and think they're owning you with their gifts. <laughs> I get a lot of those. I sick of gifts. Just stupid. Oh, I am too. Yeah. I don't even know how to do them. Uh, I've never done I them. I love them. I just think they're stupid. More, more gifts. But you love social media. You <laughs> I love, do. Yeah. See, I just, yeah. I mean, if I didn't do this for I you, I don't have a problem with seeing, like, I like to go to Instagram. I'm uh, not on Instagram because, well, there's all these. Well, I like the dodo and stuff. It's on Instagram. All these videos of animals and. Dogs I see the dodo on stuff. Twitter. I mean, I, yeah. I, I get a kick out of that. Yeah. I like yeah, there is some good stuff. I just, like I said, if I didn't have to be on social media, I wouldn't be. Whereas I think you would be, right? I mean, how many Twitter accounts do you have? Like oh, many. 20? Many. Well, <laughs> you have more than 20? I don't think I have more than 20, no. But it's it's more than 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, that's just mind-boggling to me. <laughs> but to each his Some own. of them are business-related. <laughs> like, you're Frank Cannon, right? I, maybe. <laughs> well, you don't okay. know. Well, that's a you mystery. Don't know. That's a mystery. <laughs> yeah, it could be anybody. It's a fake name. Yeah. You don't it's know. Probably Todd. Who it is. Yeah, it could be Todd. <laughs> yeah. Gee, I wonder Todd does tag him a lot. I wonder who's running that Frank Cannon account. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a break. What about the germ jar? <laughs> 1-800-800-ROSE. 1-800-800-ROSE, your FTD florist, is the only number you need to know to send flowers anywhere in the country or Canada from anywhere in the country. 1-800-800-ROSE. It's so easy. Just remember one number. 1-800-800-ROSE, your FTD florist. one 800 800 Remember, back in 1947, when young Willa Dickens began as a watchmaker at Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, the sparse utility of the war years was ready to give way to the cheer of color in fashion, furniture, and of course, jewelry. Women from Hollywood starlet to housewife glowed with colored gemstones on ear, neck, and hand. Ruby red and emerald green, blue sapphire, Purple amethyst, topaz, citron, aquamarine. Often these beauties were received heavily in a Hertine and Stalker box. Now, as in those distant days, colored gemstones are again bringing cheer and joy. 
So come see what's sparkling in those famous windows at Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, corner of Dubuque and Washington in downtown Iowa City. Then step inside and say hi to Willa, Terry, Tim, or Kate. One of them is always there. Don't wait for an emergency to get a backup for your car keys. Unlike the olden days, car keys have gotten extremely complex. Mike's E-Keys for Cars can generate the most technically advanced automotive keys that are on the market today. For spares and lost keys, Mike's E-Keys for Cars can produce most conventional transponder, high security, and remote head keys. Mike's E-Keys for Cars will keep you on the road. Call 319-330-9185 and schedule an appointment today. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 319-330-9185 today. Hi, this is Jill Sterner with Sterner Taxidermy in Lone Tree. It's hunting season again, and I'm inviting all of you hunters to follow us on our Facebook page. You can view Dirk's award-winning artistry, his workmanship that he completes with each individual piece. We can be reached at 319-330-1774. Again, 319-330-1774. Are you tired of living in a home that doesn't quite meet your needs? Then it's time to call the experts at Streets Maintenance. Their team of skilled professionals specializes in renovations and remodeling, transforming your home into the space you've always dreamed of. From kitchen bath remodels to complete home renovations, no job is too big or too small. Streets Maintenance will work with you every step of the way to ensure your vision becomes a reality. So don't wait any longer. Call Streets Maintenance to schedule your consultation at 400-4483. Let's start building your dream home today. On an athletic team, you need team players, good athletes, superior equipment, and the best coaches available. In real estate, you need to have a good title and settlement team at your disposal. Hi, this is Steve Anderson. Whether you're buying, selling, or refinancing, you need quality title and settlement services. Consider the team at Hawkeye Title. Give us a call at 351-8600. Hawkeye Title and Settlement, the team you love, the people you trust. Car won't steer? Call Premier. Premier Automotive in North Liberty offers full-service mechanical auto repair work in addition to being Eastern Iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair. Use Premier for all your auto repair needs. Brakes, oil changes, air conditioning, diagnostics, transmissions, or preventive maintenance. Whether you hit a deer or your car won't steer, see Premier Automotive in North Liberty. When you go to a family restaurant, you want three things. One, a wide selection of breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. Two, you want those selections to be affordable and delicious. And three, you want to be treated like family. You get all three at the Midtown Family Restaurant. Breakfast items available anytime the doors are open. Legendary tenderloins, onion rings, and hot roast beef sandwiches. And special ribeye and shrimp nights. Daily specials at each location. And no matter if you're coming in solo or with a group of 20, you get the same special family treatment. The Midtown Family Restaurants at Cordon Scott Street and at the Walmart Plaza on Highway 1 West. Follow them on Facebook or at MidtownFamily.com. The family's waiting for you. It's that wonderful holiday time of the year. Moments of eating too much, spending time with family, in some cases maybe trying to avoid family. However you choose to celebrate, the Diamond Dental Team of Dr. Forbes, Kate, Michelle, Michaela, and Kim would like to wish everyone a happy, healthy, and safe holiday. Here's hoping you enjoy every minute of this joyous time of the year. Rest assured, Diamond Dental is here, providing superior care for your entire family during the holiday season and all year long. GT Car, owner of Supel's Building and Remodeling, has been offering unmatched service and quality for over 25 years. The trained professionals at Supel's Building and Remodeling will install and guarantee the products used in any job, no matter how big or small. They also stand behind their work and offer no-nonsense, exceptional customer service, from design to completion and beyond. Whether it's a simple window replacement or a major house addition, you'll have the confidence that Supel's Building and Remodeling is committed to quality. Visit Supel's.com. 
Net or call them today at 319-337-2246. Been waiting all year long for year-end savings? The wait is over. This is Patrick Eads, owner of Deary Ford in Iowa City. Get a new 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew XLT up to 6500 off MSRP plus 1.9% financing. Get a new 2023 Ford Escape up to 3000 off MSRP plus 0.9 financing. Get a new 2024 Ford Edge up to 4000 off MSRP plus 0% financing. Hurry in or shop online at DearyFord.com. Ah, the new year. A chance to say goodbye to 2023 and hello to the new year. New resolutions, new goals, and hey, wouldn't it be great to begin the new year with a $10,000 cash grand prize? You could when you win in the new year at Wild Rose Casino. The winning starts just after noon as we give away $18,000 in cash drawings on New Year's Eve. See Club Wild for details. Wild Rose Casino and Hotel Clinton. You'd rather be here. Must be 21 or older. If you or someone you know needs gambling treatment, call 1-800-BETS-OFF. 84 years of preparation. The wait is over. The Oxyokins brand new book our recipes our story is on sale now 90 pages in full color 67 recipes in our unique history for only $24.99 get yours while they last at the oxyokin available soon by mail order along with our current serving hours at oxyokin.com Oxyokin in the heart of a man. From the Hurtin and Stalker Studios in the heart of the Hawkeye Nation, this is the mighty 1630 KCJJ Iowa City. Hurtin and Stalker Jewelers, making memories, making moments. Mostly cloudy right away this morning. We will have some gradual clearing here throughout the afternoon. Our high today, 39. The wind will be from the northwest at 5 to 15. Tonight, it'll be partly cloudy. Our low down to 23. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy in the morning, becoming partly cloudy in the afternoon with a high around 40. On Sunday, breezy, partly cloudy, 35. On Monday, plenty of sunshine with a high of 33. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Outside now, it's 33. KCJJ weather brought to you by Plum Supply. Plum Supply, kitchens and baths. Your home never looks so beautiful. And we're back. Hawkfanatic.com. I was just on Instagram. Yeah. Um, because I saw something on Twitter, Sebastian Castro and uh, who was the other one? A couple of the different players uh, just, I guess they got money from Cheez-It to have Cheez-Its uh, shaved into the side of their head. Like little Cheez-It shape, like uh, in their hair. <laughs> what the heck? Jay Higgins is the other one. Yeah, yeah, Sebastian Castro and Jay Higgins. What? And there's video of them on their Instagram pages of them getting Cheez-Its shaved into the back and side of their head. So they're ready for the bowl game. Jesus. I hope they got paid handsomely for that. Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its are in the trophy. I saw a picture of the trophy this morning. There's a clear sort of plastic on the front of it, and yeah. so it's hollow, and there's Cheez-Its inside the trophy, <laughs> along with the fruit on top of it. Here's a quote from Brian Ferentz. I had a chance to get to know my father professionally, which I don't know that every son does, and that's pretty special. I enjoyed every minute of working with him, and I will safely say that, no, not every son gets to enjoy that luxury. Yeah. I mean, part of me feels sorry for Brian Ferentz because you don't, you don't like to see someone fail publicly the way he has. But I also, there's a lot. He's had a pretty privileged life. Can't we agree on that? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's. I mean, he rose up the ladder faster than almost anybody did, and he is. Can we agree that he is a product of nepotism in some ways? It's 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 obvious, and that can't be denied. He got he he rose faster than a lot of people because of who his father was. I think that's fair to say. So my sympathy towards him has its limits, is what I would say. I mean, I, I mean, he did me a huge favor by standing up for me back when we launched our site and we got our credentials turned down, and I will forever be grateful for that. And I did want this to work for him. I, I, I mean, and he would have been the next Iowa head coach had he succeeded. I think his father, though, pushed him too fast. He wasn't ready to be the coordinator in 2017. And I think what I think Kirk thought in the back of his mind would be another step towards getting Brian to replace him ended up backfiring miserably. So... But, no, obviously not a lot to come out of it because I haven't seen any earth-shattering quotes. But I didn't think Brian Fer – I mean, Brian Ferentz, if his mo messages take the attention away from me, he wasn't going to go up there and say anything that would bring the attention on him, which is I think he's, he's, he succeeded with that. So there we are. There we are. Yeah. Broke it down. You think Suter was at that press conference? 
Yes. He's in the back just drunk. <laughs> no, he's not. You hear, you hear glasses. Ch- okay, that's one for you and one for you. <laughs> you got one now. I got one left. <laughs> he's, he's just he's pounding not, Cheez-Its. He's and, not. He's pounding Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its and scotch. Oh, God. Can you imagine that? <laughs> no. That's quite a combination. Yeah, I don't like scotch under any circumstance. I, I, I think scotch is gross. I mean, I haven't had it many times, but the, I don't know how anyone. Doesn't he just drink it like on ice? Isn't yeah, that how I he so. drinks? I, I th- well, I mean, he drinks. I know you want to make him sound like he's George Bailey, but <laughs> he does drink scotch. I just don't know how he does it. Okay, but yeah. he's not. You want to make him sound like he's chugging it. IV. I've never said he's, that he's chugging he's scotch, not. but scotch is his drink of choice. And yes, I, he but I don't think scotch. he mixes it with anything. I think he drinks. Yeah, I think it, he just drinks it. I just think think he drinks ice, it on ice. Which yeah. I just that's okay. a, I amazing that. to me. I, it, there's the taste is horrible. Yeah, I've never I heard him say listen. he's drinking anything but just scotch. I don't like any alcohol taste. I, I well, mean, no I alcohol like, tastes good. I mean, I, well, I, peppermint schnapps or something like that. Oh, that Fireball. Just, peach no. schnapps. We used to do those uh, shots at the tailgate. And, I mean, the butterscotch ones? Yeah, I just hate those. But like Crown Royal, I used to drink Crown Royal it's some cute. on the rocks. It didn't taste very good. I mean, I, no, I mean, no alcohol taste. No, I am a product of, uh, of chocolate sodas. I like chocolate. Yoo-hoo? You need some Yoo-hoo? <laughs> I like that. Yes, yeah, maybe yeah, they'll get a bowl game. Yeah, yeah well, Pop Tarts can, but Pop-tarts. I don't like chocolate with alcohol. Wow. That's not a good mix. I, they have an edible. Hey, the Pop Tart Bowl had an edible mascot. I, it, it, they put the Pop Tart in the giant toaster after the game. He well, went down, came Daniels out of the bottom, and they ate him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, it's kind of funny. I did not see that, but I, oh no, it's great. Go and find at it. least it was a. De- there was actually a couple bowl games on yesterday that I that I found somewhat interesting. I mean, the what? Let's see, I watched the Louisville. Who was it? Louisville versus who did Louisville just play? I'm spacing off right now. I'm not sure, but I think I saw some of that one. But there were two games on yesterday, and I'm like, oh, I North Carolina watch. State, Kansas State was the Pop Tart one. And I watched some of that. Yeah. I saw Keegan Johnson make a couple nice plays, and I saw their. Highly touted freshman quarterback who's now playing because the other one's in the portal. And this kid, I think his name was Avery Johnson. He looked really good. And speaking of quarterbacks, when I've had a lot of people ask me, what are they? I think the main thing Kirk could do to help things out, maybe he has done that with some of these late, most recent recruitees, recruiting quarterbacks they've landed. Um, they got to get a quarterback with more mobility. I mean, almost every team in the country now at least has the option of a quarterback doing something with his legs when the play breaks down. Iowa does not have that. They didn't have it with Petrus. They barely had it with Padilla. They don't have it with Deacon Hill. They supposedly had it a little bit with Labus, but Labus compared to, like, this Kansas State quarterback, he wasn't near that elusive. I think that is one thing that they have to. And maybe they've done it with this James Resar, the quarterback from Florida. He's fast. I mean, he's he's a he's got sprinter speed, but that doesn't mean he's elusive. So it'll be interesting to see if he can move the pocket because that's where I think they're just hurting themselves is by not having mobile quarterbacks. Hold on, I'm getting a phone. And that's back. hardly news. I've written about that for years. We got to do this. Hello, Louisville at USC. That's right. Doesn't have to call him Johnson. Oh, the Kansas okay, yeah. Kansas State quarterback. Yeah. That's right. You and, and I watched it. I watched him. It was a. I'm also was, Ray J. Johnson on the uh, um, the USC quarterback was in for the for Caleb Johnson, who's out because he's going to the NFL draft, and he threw six touchdown passes. The USC quarterback. Do you know how hard it is for Iowa to throw six touchdown passes? <laughs> about a That's what's worth. amazing though when you watch these bowl games is how s- most teams make offense look so easy compared to how Iowa makes it look. No, it's a, that's it's, the problem. Yeah, Iowa makes a completing struggle. a forward pass. I was watching the was it Virginia Tech and somebody in the rain, and it was like a high scoring game. <laughs> was it, <laughs> was it the play. Fenway Bowl, Boston College? Yeah, yeah, it was they just played pouring rain. Yeah, and you know, I mean, just like the Pinstripe Bowl, Rutgers won the Pinstripe Bowl yesterday. And I just am not a big fan of uh, bowl games being played at baseball stadiums in the northern part of the country in late December. Yeah. It just, it just doesn't seem. It just seems forced. I think it was the military. It bowl, is. Now that I think it, about it. It is forced. They want the money, and but I don't know how the making, communities want the money. And I don't know how they make the money though. The TV ratings can't be that high. There's nobody in the stadium. Where's the money coming from? Just ESPN. the fact that. Just the fact that they're on TV. But how many times will they allow a bowl game to run if they don't this, have good ratings? Every bowl game is different, though. But a lot of them have crappy ratings. But so I don't somebody's know how... watching them. Well, yeah, somebody's watching You don't know what they're sell- selling the spots for. They might not be selling the spots for that much. They're certainly not selling the spots for what they're 
what they're going to get Monday out of our bowl. But I can't a imagine bowl. a lot. I, I imagine a lot of people doing what January I did when I, first I glossed over almost all these bowl games. I can't imagine a lot of people, other than directly related to those teams, were watching most. Of, were watching most of these bowl games. I'd love to get some of the ratings. Well, how many people are going to be watching our game other than us in Tennessee? I'm, I'm going to say what, maybe two, three million. Yeah, maybe. If I had to guess, I don't know how many other games are on at that time. Maybe one. I don't think that'll matter. I just yeah. don't think there's – now, some people may watch Iowa just to, oh, let's say this is that offense that can't complete a pass. <laughs> yeah. There may be some of the, you know, the like a – Oddity. An oddity type thing, <laughs> you know. So there may be some of that. I mean, because unfortunately, I think when people think of Iowa football right now, they don't think of how good the defense and special teams are. They think of how inept the offense is. I think people that aren't really close to the program, I think that's the first thing that comes to their mind. Because of what's happened. And Monday, last it's year. basically our game. And I think there's another game around our, ours, and then that's the two semifinals. Yes, and right? then is, doesn't Wisconsin play today? I think. I, they I think. Do. I think. Doesn't Iowa State play today? Yeah, they Iowa do. State. Play I'll watch today. that. I will too. Iowa State, Memphis. Not Actually, that I'm over. I'll watch that. Not that I'm that interested in Memphis, but if Iowa State's on, they're a fun team to watch, and then, you know, kind of like with a Big Ten team, I have some interest because it's local. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, I don't see Wisconsin today. Pretty sure Iowa State's today. Iowa State is today. They are at two thirty. Okay. Clemson and Kentucky are at 11. Oregon State, Notre Dame's at 1 on CBS. I mean, I'll watch some of that um, just because I'm a Notre Missouri, Dame. Missouri, Ohio State is tonight at 7 o'clock. I mean, Notre Dame doesn't have its quarterback. I don't Cotton Bowl's tonight. Now, who, who's in the Cotton Bowl? Missouri and Ohio State. Okay. God, Cotton Bowl. What's today? The, today's the 29th or 30th? Uh, what is it? 29th. 29th. Cotton Bowl on December 29th. It's just so straight. I, Cotton Bowl used to be one of my favorite bowls on New Year's Day. Yeah, I was New about Year's 11 Day. o'clock in the morning. I used to love the Cotton Bowl. My dad's calling again. I hope we didn't trigger him for something here. Hello. Wisconsin plays January 1st, same day we do. Okay. Hey, Pat? Yeah. With Brian Ferentz in high school plays center. College, he played center. He played Who guard, was too. And wasn't he also the offensive line coach under Belichick? He, I, no, he tied in coach under Bill and coach. a graduate, of, and, and he was sort of like an, uh, an assistant how on many, offense. How many centers in college have gone to, on to play really good offensive coordinators? Not many, are there? How many what? How many uh, offensive? Uh, offensive linemen have gone on to be good coaches, like an offensive coordinator. That I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I don't know of any. Yeah, I mean, it no. was unusual to have an offensive coordinator who has never coached you quarterback. Know, I, I think Brian could have been a great offensive line coach here. And- I mean, Andy Reid was an offensive lineman. Yeah. And he's turned out to be a pretty good coach. Andy Reid is a good example, yeah. Yeah. yeah but so, that's I, one guy. That's one name I can think things of. Things when you're yeah, high. I just wish him luck. Whatever happens in the future, I just wish him good luck. All right. Thanks, yeah, Dad. I mean, I don't, I wish I don't want to vote. I don't want, I don't <laughs> want Brian Ferentz to fail. I mean, I don't wish that no. on anybody. He's not going to fail. But he's either. not going to fail. He's yeah. made – do you realize how much money he's made? He's been there for 12 years. He's probably made 8 to $10 million yeah, since he's been he's here. he's not going to fail. You know, he'll, he'll get a job and he'll And he'll get fine. a nice – don't you think he'll get a nice inheritance someday too? Well, I don't want to think about but it. But I'm just <laughs> saying that's – I don't feel sorry for Brian Ferentz. Well, what if uh, Kirk pulls the Jerry Lewis? I don't see Kirk doing that. <laughs> no. Nobody but that mean son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I thought, I thought I read Tommy – what's the – Tommy – the – Actor. Tommy Lee Jones. No, Tommy, you know, Jackie Chan. I oh. read where he was, he's worth like $70 million and he said he was not going to leave any to his son. I read this on Twitter because he says his son should work for it the way he did. You know, I, that seems yeah, a little harsh. Because everybody can be a martial arts actor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's you should work it like Now, I, thought, I saw that on Twitter, so it may not be true. Google it and find out. Jackie no, Chan. I, I saw it. And I don't know if it's true. I, I but, saw it in an article where he said, you know, his son's got to earn a. But haven't there been other money. famous actors that have come Yeah, out? and like, I don't get that. I don't why have kids in if you're not going to leave them something? Yeah. I don't get that. I really don't get that. Hell, I don't if have my can, own kids. If you but, can get somebody a step up, then why? Well, well, I don't have my own kids, but when I die, I'm leaving my empire to my nephews and nieces, yeah. you know? And, you know, they'll take it and go out and buy a bowl of soup. I'm leaving my empire here to <laughs> the empire. I was kidding. My kid don't want it. But no, my nephews, are, <laughs> my my nephew and nieces are, and I've got a ton of them. Yeah. They're, they're going to, whatever I have, yeah. but, you know, by the time I die, I mean, they'll get whatever's left. I will, uh, whatever is left, if there's anything left. Whatever's left, I'll leave uh, 
to Shane, uh, 90... I thought you were going to leave it to Mace. No, I'm leaving the station to Mace. Okay, the station. Uh, nice. I'll leave 90% to Mace and 10% to Animal, sh- animal Show. Oh, wow, the there sun's coming out. Yeah, I'll have to close these shades. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. No, I, I, the snow was... And I appreciate I believe it was probably my neighbor, Ed, for somebody um, snow plowed or snow... What do you call it? Snow blow? Snow blow. My, they blowed? My sidewalk in my driveway today because the city came by and, you know, they pushed the big thing up when they do the street. But somebody had done that when I came out today. I assume it was Ed, and I appreciate that. And then I didn't have my – I'm guessing – I shoveled a little bit off my driveway, but I'm guessing the sun would have – it was hardly any. What did we get, yeah. like an inch? A little over. Man. But this is what I wish we would have had on Christmas Day. It just yeah, I, I, that's, not enough to be super inconvenient once it's done. But yeah, and we don't have any other serious stuff coming. It's it doesn't look like. Okay. Uh, from the chat room, no, the Hall of Fame show was last Friday, and uh, we've already got it on YouTube on our page, and we've got it on our Facebook page. So if that's what you're asking, that's and. Uh, Indy Hawk, uh, Indy Hawk, if you don't like the way we do the show, then... Then don't listen. Go yeah, away. Don't listen. Don't watch it. Don't listen. You think you goddamn know more than I know about putting together a show. What's he saying? What's his recommendation? Oh, you know, we, uh, more sports. We, we, yeah. Let's look at the listenership of this show versus the sports station where all they do is talk about sports and drone on about the same crap every freaking day. Well, we talked a lot of sports Wednesday. We talk a lot of sports all the time. But you know something? It's a show, and it's part of the morning show. Yes. So I don't look at it like this is a sports show. This is an extension of the morning show. Okay, but uh, counterpoint, though, the all-sports station. Todd has been off the air for an hour yeah. and 18 minutes. Yeah. And I'm still here, and I'm going to be 75, and I've been on the freaking air for 60 goddamn years. So I think I know a little bit more than you know about doing a goddamn radio show. Wow. This would be where he struck a Sue nerve. would be nervously tapping his pen right now. He struck a nerve, Indy yeah. Hawk. Yeah. 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 So what he said that we need to talk more about talk more sports yeah. okay let, let's go back to the hawks i mean the, the men's basketball games tonight at six o'clock iowa versus northern illinois you got the what's the soldier salute wrestling soldier salute start, tomorrow and t- uh, i thought today it started tomorrow. today today and tomorrow today and tomorrow that's yeah. men and women wrestling over men at extreme women. arena you got the women playing minnesota tomorrow i mean what do you want to know i mean i mean <laughs> i mean jesus we taught we we meet three days we do this four days a week we can't just it would get boring just talking sports Yes. It would and, get extremely and, boring just talking sports. And there's a reason we got the listenership we do. And I've seen other... And how many times have you heard and I've heard? Uh, because not everybody is a fanatic. If you've got, I've had a lot of people say I they mean, enjoy the Hawk drifting. fanatic, but it, it, not everybody is just sports. Most people like sports, but they listen to us uh, because we're normal people talking about crap and they like the drifting and they I like get that stuff. a lot. Yeah. I get that a lot that say yeah. yeah, I like it when you guys And obviously, uh how many times now have uh, locals love us given the highest listenership? We I... got the most listeners over 40. We've got the most listeners uh that make over $100,000. We've got the most listeners that make over $70,000. We lead in 14 of 16 categories for Locals Love Us, which does between uh, 3,600 and 4,000 responses every freaking time they do a poll. I think we've won Locals Love Us every time since you replaced me with Hunter. Yes. So Hunter's the difference. Yeah, Hunter's the difference. (laughs) I I brought the show down. I replaced him. With Hunter. My stupid because, puppets. and Because he was in the hospital for a year and a half. <laughs> but it wasn't yeah, quite I mean, that long, but sometimes it felt like that. Yeah. How long was it? I was only in the hospital for like two months. No, but how long were you? But I was out down. for uh, almost a year. 
let's see, yeah. like around Thanksgiving yeah. to I came back August 17th. Yeah. So I'm like, not, about nine months. But yeah. sorry, Indy Hawk, we're never going to just be about – I mean, yeah. most of the podcasts and stuff that talk about just sports, I find them boring oh, after yeah. a while. I just – okay, I don't need to know the third-string cornerback. And I just find it boring after a while. Yeah, and so but, I listeners. mean, Wednesday's show was very sports-heavy. I mean, we had two good guests on for an hour and a half talking. You know, we had the head of the CEO and Don Patterson. Don't need to, we, and Suter was here. We don't need to justify anything to Indy Hawk. Well, no, but you brought it up. I wouldn't have known that about it. That pissed me off. What, what, did he, what was his exact re- read? I'll read said. it verbatim. He needs to stop pretending it's a Hawkeye segment. Just embrace the fact that it's about the following subjects. G.G. Allen, Panera soup prices, how much water Pat's tree requires, funny porn names, etc. Man, that guy must listen closely because... Yeah, I don't remember. I, I, I don't even... Tree. I mean, when's the last time we made a G.G. Allen reference? Uh, probably not that long ago. I, I maybe well, a week. But your tree, you haven't mentioned. I haven't mentioned. It. Yeah, the tree. I don't even remember you ever mentioning. Oh, I've mentioned it a couple times back in like June when it wasn't raining. See, that's a weirdo. That's a stalker. Yeah, he didn't include anything about Todd getting off the air at nine, though. Yeah. So he can't be listening that closely. So yeah, but no, that guy's just he's he was trying to. Uh, it was his gotcha moment. I just sick of that crap. But that kind of post is what you get on Twitter nonstop. Yeah. But that's... Weasel Fest Time Machine says he wants more Gigi Allen talk. <laughs> so you can't please everybody. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, you know, G.G. Allen, that, it's, the time has got to be right for that. <laughs> yeah, and, I agree. And I don't have a real urge to talk about G.G. Allen right now. Suter needs to be in here to talk about watching the documentary again. Yeah, with Ann. Yeah. I, still, <laughs> I still can't believe that. And, and that they made it through. I like it when he's, well, there's a few rough moments. <laughs> and I asked him, is that when the poop was? Yeah. When the, poop, yeah. The, the rough moments were the was the feces. <laughs> I imagine that. How, how much scotch do you think they'd have to drink before they start that movie? I'm guessing they were pouring scotch over their head. <laughs> no, See, now I got mine in. Knock it off. I wonder how Brian, if I would have been at that thing. Hey, Brian, way off the way off course. Here, what are your thoughts on Gigi Allen? Oh, and then <laughs> yeah. he says, uh, LOL, for the record, I actually prefer drifting uh, to the Hawkeye stuff. Well, so I, so I would say. that, Captain. So, take that, Captain. So, yeah. like, you're, oh. Well, I'll put you in your place, Captain. But we, I'm going to put you in your place after being on the air for 60 freaking years. I'm going to put you in your place like you can put me in my place. You know, you kind of started almost at the same time as the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> wow. You started what? You started in 62, 63? No, I did not. Well, that's 60. 60. Captain, I'm 60 years old. I was born in 63. <laughs> I went at the radio in 65. <laughs> Okay, well, the Andy Griffith show was still in primetime. Don Knotts was still on the show. What, till 67, right? Well, 65 was his last year. Okay. He did 60 through 65. <laughs> well, one of us is still alive. <laughs> yeah, he's been gone for a while. I mean, they're all well, gone. Well, thank you, Indy Hawk. For, we have a call? For, for putting me in my place. <laughs> we, I heard the phone ring. I just like to yell. Uh, it's what I do. Don't you think I do that well? Yell? No, yeah. you're good. You're a good yeah. yeller. You no, do yell a lot. Yeah. Not old, a lot of old guys can yell like that. When I change the thermostat. Uh, hello? Hey, Pat, when Cade's done at Iowa, do you think they'll go back to having he can be the starter? Uh, that's a good question. I couldn't begin to answer it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like I said, I would just be guessing. I mean, he's got to play better, but we'll see. I mean, that will be if, – if that happens, Marco Lane isn't going to be around and – you got the kid coming from Florida, but I, I couldn't begin to guess on that one. And then um, how many viewership, the viewership, is, do you think the Iowa women are losing when they put them on, like, Peacock and Big Ten Club? I, I'm sure it, probably a considerable amount, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Some. I don't yeah. know for sure. Well, I would think, to, yeah, they're losing a, a yeah. good amount. Is tomorrow's game on Peacock? No, tomorrow is Big Ten Network. Big Ten Network, yeah. okay. But I no the men. What yeah. are the men tonight? They're on BTN Plus. Okay, that's right. I'd rather watch it on Peacock. Well, yeah, because I get Peacock. It's cheaper, and it's better. <laughs> the coverage is so much better. No, Peacock is. I mean, it's yeah, you got to pay for it and stuff, but it's a professional it's NBC. presentation. Yeah, yeah it's, it's NBC. NBC. Yeah. yeah, and well, Big Ten uh, uh, BTN Plus should be Fox, but I don't know where they get these. Second a lot of times, a lot, with, well, a lot of times it's students. 
depending on the sport. Yeah, and, and it's bad. Yeah. And the camera is bad. And it depends and where it no is. there's no graphics. And it's Iowa does a good amateur. job for the games that are here. But, like, I've watched Iowa baseball games out of, like, Maryland or Rutgers. And it's, like, the security camera. Mm-hmm. There's, like, one camera. It's a security camera. They're just using, like, the college radio call over it. You know, Iowa put some money into the big BTN games that are here. I'll give them credit for that. I like Yandy Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Stewart in the chat room. KCJJ is the most listened to station by former radio guys. That I can, yes, I can believe that. <laughs> yeah, because you can't believe that we're still on the air. Yes. And you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you got screwed. <laughs> you tried to be professional your whole career. Where to get you? Yeah. You're in real estate now. <laughs> I'm still sort of a newcomer compared to you guys. I only, I'd never been on radio until 2000. Well, I had done radio shows, but I'd never. 2008. That's when I came. Yeah, but you're an oddity. Yeah, an oddity. Those those classic good call moments. I've been told that before. No, you, no, you are normal and natural, and I I don't know how to. You're yeah, you're natural for it. What for radio? Yeah, you always were. So I was missing my calling all those years. I was. Slaving away at a, at a newspaper. Very seriously. Well, you got behind the microphone here. You weren't timid. You weren't nervous. You just were yourself. Again, he, but he'd been on Good Call and got yeah. that Good Call. Well, yeah, I wasn't on Good Call very much. Yeah. I remember one time listening to Good Call, and the guy called in and said, what is wrong with that Pat Hardy? Why is he such a hater? And it was Todd and Robin there, and they were all delicately trying to answer that question. I got a kick out of that. That was during the Alford times. Did you get to have free food from my Did it? Okay, um, I can't remember did, if they fed us or not. Did a good call like rip? They ripped us. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we made fun of it. I mean, you you guys called it please call, please call. <laughs> no, it was please call. <laughs> I mean, you deserved a little I bit of it. That, yeah. I mean, <laughs> no mean, call. I did it well. <laughs> you called it the please. Best. You called it please call one time. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Listen. The best thing I ever heard out of that station, and it was uh, they had Doctor On, yeah. the chiropractor. Oh yeah, Doctor On, the chiropractor. Yeah, had like an infomercial. Yeah, and yeah. so and this woman calls up. No, no acupuncture, not chiropractor. Acupuncture, acupuncture, yeah, acupuncture. This woman calls up and asks, you know, and everything was yeah, ac- acupuncture good for that. Yeah, and uh, this woman calls up and asks him a question. And he, you don't hear any answer. And she goes, well, I can see you're nodding your head. <laughs> yes, I was listening to that. <laughs> I told you about that. Yeah, I called you. She was, she was well, I can see you nodding sales, your head. Thank she you was for... a sales rep in the next room yeah. calling in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, the first time yeah. I started doing radio was with please. Ron Gonder. Ron Gonder used to do that yeah. down at the Oxshow Canyon. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right there, you walk into the lobby yeah. at the hotel there and... They would feed it. We'd get fifty bucks. Oh wow! And for one hour, and they would feed us dinner there. Oh, it was great. I mean, we did that on Tuesdays. We'd have Hayden's press conference, and then on Tuesdays, and he had me on a lot, and I enjoyed doing it. And I mean, fifty bucks, hell, that's still a decent amount of money now. But back then, that that I mean, we're talking that was thirty years ago almost. And they would get a free dinner. They'd wait on us. That was that was my first radio, and that was it was Ron Gonder, and I'd be he'd be with three. Beat beat writers from the yeah. Iowa beat. That's when I first started doing radio, and the first time I ever ate at the Oxyoke Inn. And I remember I always, it was, I mean, it was great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. getting free food and fifty bucks for an hour's worth. Like that. I forgot all about that. Please, Please call. call. <laughs> yeah, I <didn't> like that. <laughs> Take up. Was I think Doctor Man called this clown or something. Yeah, he called. <laughs> he called you. No, he said Mickey Mouse Mickey Network. Mouse. Mickey Mouse operation. Mickey Mouse yeah. operation, and then he went off. <laughs> You went off on him and his family. And <laughs> it was not good. I remember I finally told you to tone it down, and you did. Yeah. When you started, like, ripping his wife, I'm like, we don't need to go there. No. Get along with her now. Yeah. No, I've heard – I don't know her, but I've been told she's, she's a very, show, yeah. very nice person. Yeah. yeah Why? Well, well, you were pissed. He shouldn't have said that. Yeah, he should not have. <laughs> I, I... He called you a Mickey Mouse operation. Sometimes Steve well, can be thin-skinned. Well, we call ourselves a Mickey Mouse operation. Well, well. Uh, but it depends on who's saying it, right? No, it's a, it's, but that struck a nerve with you. Yeah. What did it's a Mickey Mouse operation? No, that he said that. No, you know my wife's always got on my case because if somebody like insults me, you know I start. You didn't laugh at this start, one though. You were. Why did uh, you were pissed? 
I don't know why it pissed you off. Well, I still... think he, he said it on another radio show, I think is what really yeah. pissed you off. Yeah. You know, and no, you were pissed. Because, yeah. remember, he called into the, stu- the station a few times to ask you to st- tone it down, and you you yelled, to, like, go to hell. <laughs> Rot in hell. Yeah. But, but, yeah, they used to do that. I remember Good Call, the, the what's the radio station that's right off of exit 242 there? KXIC. Yeah, they used to do it there. Then yeah, they moved it. the Dubuque Strike. Then they moved it to the IRP. I did it there a few times, and I thought maybe that's when I started listening because I think Todd did, was on it. A did lot. they also do it at Flanagan's too at one time? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. sure. If they but I was on it. A few they times. actually only moved it from Flanagan's because they closed. Flanagan's closed for lunch. It used to be open for lunch. I wasn't on it that much, though. I think you know the, I was viewed as negative, you know, because I think they wanted more. That's where I first heard Karn was calling that show. Her yeah, that's where I first heard every day. Well, when we first put you on, and we, you know, uh, why are you putting him on? He's uh, anti hawk and everything. And then, like a year later, I get, God, you guys have changed him. Nobody's have, changed. Have him. we ever asked you no, to say and or do anything? I look at myself as doing my job when I have people yeah. accusing me of being a homer and a hater. Yeah. You can't typecast me. I just go with what I feel on that given subject. Well, no tribalism. I'm not going to take Iowa's side on everything just because it's Iowa. I mean, that's, I just go with how I feel. And that's, I mean, if you're going to write columns and stuff, you've got to be genuine. You've got to be true to what you're thinking, or it's just, it's not a column. It's not truthful. <laughs> I forgot all I think, about you know that. what, though? We didn't come up with that. Rommel Camp came up with that. <laughs> That's the first time I heard that was him saying. No, I think it might have actually called. been somebody else who I'm not going to name on the air. I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. But it made us all laugh. But then you guys kind of transferred it over to what's the, the gym class? Or oh, yeah, it, gym class. You yeah. guys would all, remember when you were poking front of that all the time? Yeah. Well, that's because you, you like to get under Dukes' skin, right? That's all. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 you guys disagree politically. That, there's a vast gap between your guys' political uh, Yeah, opinions. I think that's safe to say. No, that's not why, though. Why is because when Rob Norton was alive, I said something about it, and Rob called For those who don't know, Rob was the owner of yeah the of KGYM. Yeah, and, and Z. Z and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so. My I former s- boss at KRN. I said something about uh, the gym class, and he, he called me up, and he goes, oh, man. Uh, Dukes was, uh, he was listening and he was upset. And I go, okay, well, I'll, I'll tone it down. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and actually, Rob Norton encouraged yes. me to I worked for that man for, 11, for like 10 years, and I can tell you that is exactly what he would do. <laughs> yeah, he wanted me to attack. <laughs> you have kind of backed off on You've kind of backed off on that. I forgot about it because after they moved, Todd, I don't even know what's on there anymore. Well, I think, is the gym class still on? Yeah, it's still on. Three to four? Yeah, they just aren't on next to Todd, and I think that's by design. Or some people say the grim class. That I've heard of. <laughs> I know who started that one, too, and I won't, say his, I won't say his name on the air either. One of my coworkers <laughs> calls it the grim class. <laughs> Wow, that's good. Okay, so is anybody on after it? The- I think it's only just ESPN Radio, isn't it? They don't even call it KGYM anymore. It's ESPN Radio whatever. They got rid of the KGYM part. I don't know. I, I know don't Todd's know. told me that he's he's adjusted to the morning and he likes it much better. Yeah, well, he's got a son well, yeah, now. Yeah, he only works school. from 6.30 to 9. Well, yeah, but he's in there eight hours a day. Well, he works. I mean, he's there all day. I I'm mean, in here. Um, but he, um, But years. I think he likes getting it done and then. And just having your evenings, you know, he's got more of his evenings off now. Yeah. So, I mean, I just I like Todd. In, in case anybody, you know, oh, we all like Todd. Crap, yeah. I, yeah. I like Todd. Yeah, we don't. I've never had an issue. He used with to Todd. work here. He used to work here. He and did I the like Man show before you did. And I like seeing pictures of him and his kid because the kid looks exactly like him. Well, yeah. Todd started coming here yeah. when I he started filling in for me when I couldn't be here yeah. at times after we started the Press Citizen thing. That's right. Yeah, that's how Todd started. Here, so well, yeah, yeah no, I mean, no, I like, I like. You. No, Todd's a good guy, and I'm not sure if he's going to the bowl game or not. Um, but we will have Brian Hurley. I actually talked to Brian Hurley yesterday. He's going to be covering the bowl game for us. I'm, I don't believe he was there today. 
I think he's going to start doing some stuff tomorrow, but he's going to actually cover the game for us. So it's going to be interesting having a former Iowa football player actually covering the game for is us. Is he the one running your uh, YouTube account for Hawk Fanatic right now? Because I've seen a lot of stuff from the bowl game on Hawk Fanatic on your YouTube page. Um, and it's not me. Okay. I mean, it's probably Dallas. Oh, Dallas is down there? No, but um, can't you, do you have to be down there? to? Oh, no, he could send it. Brian Hurley could send it to Dallas, and he could put it up. Okay, maybe that's what I'm saying. And Rob posts our videos and stuff like that. Whatever Iowa sends us, Rob will end up putting that in a story folder and posting it on our site. Like, we've had all the player videos up, and we had them yeah. from you. Yeah, because yeah, Iowa's making all that stuff available. Man, the sun is really shining. Oh, look at this. How warm is it supposed to get today? Uh, Only like 37, 39. Right? 39. Oh, so okay. most of the snow will be gone probably. It'll be gone in the next couple of days, okay. yeah. Hello. You know, the one thing that you got to like about this show is you do tell the truth, Pat, about the Hawks. If there's something issue-wise – we hear about it, you know. It's you don't try to sugarcoat stuff, and that's the one thing that I appreciate the most about you guys is that when I listen, I get the truth. Okay, well, it's we appreciate not that. Sugarcoated, it's not whitewashed. It's here's the way it is. This is how I feel. You know, that's so much different than you hear on other places where they try to sugarcoat everything and make everything. Oh yeah, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rain, but you know, mm-hmm. nothing like that out of you guys. Plus, it's fun to listen to Captain go on rants. There's nothing better. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate your yeah. listening. We really do. No. I listen every day. You guys keep me company while I'm on the road, so I appreciate that. All right. So, well, safe travels. Yeah. Happy New Year. No, Happy you New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I appreciate that, and I think a lot of I, – I, I'd like to think that there's a lot of fans out there that want – truth and objectivity but there are some that want to be fed the company line i get that and oh trust me i've got my share of hawkeye fans that don't like me a lot of them on twitter and whatever i i don't care i mean i i mean of course you want to be liked but you don't want to compromise yourself to be liked by especially by people on freaking twitter i mean i love the people who oh, i'm gonna block you or stop following you're like oh my god like i'm gonna crawl under a rock and cry yeah. i mean fine whatever i'll get the uh I'm going to uh, never listen to you, and I'm going to tell my family never to listen to you. And then Those the next day, they're all listening. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. And yeah. They, they might not have been listening till he told them not to listen. Yeah, I'm, so I do. I mean, there's and a yeah. lot of the people, a lot of the Hawk fans on Twitter that hate me, I've either muted or blocked them, or they block me. Fine, good riddance. You know, but honest to God, in, in the last, especially like the last five years, I don't get negatives when I, well, I you know when I, we go to like the grocery store bread garden or high V or whatever uh people are so kind and i mean oh yeah i rarely i yeah. always get more positive stuff i mean yeah. yeah i mean and the last time i was accosted by somebody with negativity was tenderloin guy you know and that was a couple yeah. years ago where he, yeah. he he cornered me at the grocery store and wanted to know why we won't do more conservative viewpoints. And and I'm just like, dude, I don't want to get into this. Go away. You know, and he was, was ripping Caitlin Clark because she gave the girl a basketball. Well, he's obsessed with Caitlin Clark. I know. So, oh, well, gave her uh, shoes. Yeah. Or I'm, was that it? Yeah, the shoes. Yeah, gave I'm shoes. not on Facebook, but I've been told that he just rips her all the time. Oh, yeah. If you go to any Channel 9 story about he's Caitlin Clark. so jealous of her, and it's just so pathetic. It's, well, it's pathetic because it's embarrassing to her. You know, and his daughter. Yeah, his daughter uh, is a champion as well, and and you know. But here we are giving him attention. Yeah, you yeah. brought him up. I did. I, I did. Tenderloin but, boy. Well, because I couldn't remember his name. I like that. Boy. I like that term. I like that. Here's tenderloin boy. I'm please call. I couldn't remember his name. Now it's yeah. come back to me. <laughs> please, please call. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. That's going to be in my brain all day. I remember. I never remembered that, but I remember. Because there were times when you'd listen to that show and they would, <laughs> yeah. nobody would call. Yeah, it was Karn and Wally, and that was about. That it. was about it. Was well, there I, a guy I, from like Bettendorf would call him? Dave I'm, from Bettendorf. Yeah, he called here a few times oh, yeah. too. Yeah. But I think he, I think the 2020 election drove him away, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah, Dave that. from Bettendorf used to call in a lot. <laughs> Hopefully he's still alive. I mean, I haven't heard anything to say otherwise. I mean, I wouldn't wish death on anyone. Grim class. Grim class is good. That's good, too. Yeah. And I've heard dim class, too. That's the no, other one. No, Norton was. <laughs> Norton. He listened to our canon coverage every day. He was a big fan of the canon thing. I liked that for a while, but I agree with Suter. It got a little old. Yeah. 
And yeah. you always say I was responsible for it. I didn't tell you guys to do that. Yes, I, you did. I just told I you know. about Cannon being on. You told us about it. And then we but know. I didn't think it would become a, a well, year and a half. We watched the first one, and it was so ridiculous. Yes. Yeah, I thought it was interesting for a while, but after I was with Suter. After about six months. We had a, a professor, well, Dave uh, uh, Baker, uh, who uh, is a professor and the head of uh, communications at St. Ambrose. He uh, called me up. Uh, and said, I've planned my class schedule around listening to you guys watch the, watch uh, Canon. What yes. made you finally stop? <laughs> uh, they pulled it off of BTV. Uh-huh. We were going to stop anyway. Well, now it's on but, at 2 a.m. on. Well, no, we, I think we got to like the third run of reruns, and we yeah. said, we've seen these episodes three times already. Yeah. Yeah, we just stopped. Shooter just but then they moved it. it. Then they moved it. Yeah, Shooter like would just roll his eyes. He thought it was ridiculous. Well, you were talking about Rob Norton earlier. I remember yeah. there was a Fry Fest when we were in Coralville. I went over to visit because Z and, and Todd was doing a show from live from Fry Fest. I'm like, I'll go say hi to Todd. So it's me and Todd and Rob Norton and one of the salespeople. And we were talking about Canon because Rob wanted and Rob and Nor- uh, Bromel Camp wanted to talk about Canon. So we're talking about Canon and the sales rep from Z just goes, do, do they have the rights to carry that on the air? Norton just says, it's Bridges. No. <laughs> he seemed almost proud of you. <laughs> I, I miss him. I know. I do miss it's him. Bridges. No. <laughs> of course not. Oh, those were good times. Yeah. Well, anything else? Yeah, anything else we should get to? Um, I'm looking on, I'm doing one last little Twitter thing to see if there's been any updates. This is our last Hawk Fanatic of the year. Just out of that. Oh, it is. Yeah, we yeah. should have had a re- retrospective. Best of. A look back. Best of Gigi Allen yeah. talk. I'm not seeing. Let's see. I'm not seeing anything. Because it just seems like so often when we're on the, on the air. Um, well, like, for example, we had Don Patterson on for that hour. Five minutes after he's off the air, the quarterback for Tennessee announces on Instagram that he's skipping the game. Yeah. And it just yeah. seems like. I, I'm not seeing anything. Brian Ferentz, is, Brian Ferentz and Ted Danson are the two things trending on my. Why is Ted Danson? I'll, I'll look and see. Um, happy birthday to the. It's he. I don't know how old he is. It's his birthday. How old would you say Ted Gotti? Ted Danson? He's got to be getting close to 80, doesn't he? Yeah, he's looking at it. Yeah, maybe. I haven't seen it. I've seen a lot of happy birthdays. but Maybe mid-70s. Nobody's saying he's... I've he is my dad's 76. Age. Okay. okay, yeah, he's about my dad's age. He's still got all his hair. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Is I'm that Mr. Mayor show it's, still on? It, no. It's fake? Well, yeah. here's a picture of him, and he's got hair. This well, is, yeah, but it's... it's It doesn't look like a wig. It's gray. I think it's a wig, because he uh, did... So, he's bald on the top. Yeah, because this looks, like, this looks yeah. like the hair he had 40 years ago, yeah. just different color. You know, so, but yeah, I was, uh, you guys are going to probably find this amazing. I was not a huge Cheers fan. Seriously? I thought, I thought it was okay. I mean, I, I, I still but I was some not, of that stuff. I, like I did it. not like it with Shelley Long. No. I liked it better it with was, the nut. Oh, Christy yeah, Alley was Christy great. Alley. Is she still alive? No. She just died like in the last year, right? What did yeah. she die of? Cancer. Did she really? That's sad. Yeah. I had the hots for her. Oh, God, yeah. She was just Hilarious. fantastic on that. No, that's when I go, and I watch, I, I will. You know, like if I can't sleep or something, I'll uh, go turn on the damn TV and watch watch Cheers on one of the streams. Uh, it, but only I don't watch the Shelley. Shelley Long, Long just did not do it for before me. Before no. she was on Cheers, she was in. Kirstie Alley was in a movie where oh, who was it? Gene Simmons was the villain. It was like a sci-fi movie. Oh, she was in the first Star Trek. And she was in the first Star Trek movie, yeah. But I'm trying to think what the one with Gene Simmons as the villain was. I got a kick when Norm would walk in, like Woody said, "Hey, what's going on, Mr. Peterson?" He say, "Hey, Woody, let's not talk about what's going on, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> let's talk about what's going in, Mr. Peterson. Give me a beer." I was, uh, I remember that one. That made me laugh. But I just, I, I was not that and Stein, Seinfeld were two shows. I just never oh, really I latched love onto. Seinfeld. I just never really got into either one. Okay, Runaway. It was called, starring Tom Selleck. And then, of course, Friends is a show. I can't believe you people know, watch okay, Friends. Okay, I can, yeah. That, I love that people like college I, students today watch it. I don't, yes. I just. Those it, people are all about my age, too. Well, yeah. it was the same crap. And it was just torture. It, it was just, a, yeah. I, I agree with you. We are in the vast minority, but I agree. I, it, I watched it the first couple seasons, and then he got involved with some British uh, yeah. swimmer guy. 
And I thought, this is just ridiculous. This yeah, I'd ridiculous. much rather watch a rerun of the Rockford Files from the mid-'70s than any episode of Friends. But obviously a lot of people liked it. Do you like my Regal Beagle T-shirt I'm wearing from Three's Company? Oh. <laughs> That is, that's right. The Regal Beagle, yeah. I watched Three's Company, but I've told you before. I enjoyed it. I didn't like Don Knotts on Three's Company. I, I disagree. Mr. Furley just did not work for me. It was not Barney Fife. It just... Well, well that's... Yeah. yeah. It just well, didn't... It just... Barney, I just I, didn't find him funny. <laughs> I just did not find... I just did not find that show very funny. What about Mr. Lippitt? Um, no, I never liked any of that stuff either. Yeah. Didn't he do some Apple Dumpling Gang with Tim? Yeah, Con- yeah. yeah none of that stuff. Uh, the first one. Was- What's the one with him and Tim Conway, and they were investing in like a haunted house or something? Yeah, I remember. The That's why he left the Andy. Kid. Didn't he leave Andy Griffith because he had signed a contract to make those movies? Yeah, to make movies. Yeah. yeah. He was just, it was just like ghost and chicken. Yeah, yeah. Ghost none of those chicken. Okay. Hey, hey, none he, of those things worked for me. No, but he made more money off. Well, that's why he left. Those yeah. movies. Yeah. Than he would have made off Andy Griffith. And then he went and did the Mr. Furley in the seventies, yeah. and, and yeah, then he just, went, and he was on uh, uh, Matlock. Yeah, he made guest appearances on Matlock. Yes, and Matlock's now, I see reruns of that. Hell, I thought the Ropers were funnier than Mr. Furley on Three's Company. The ro- you know, the yeah. cause, oh, I, I, partly because Mr. Roper looked exactly like my high school baseball And player. he would look at Norman, the, directly at the camera. Norman yeah. I was Fell. like that. Norman Fell Norman looked right Fell, at the yeah. camera with that smile. I just never got into Three's Company. I didn't either, really. Uh-huh. I, I just It just didn't work for me. Uh-uh. The Regal Beagle. I've been actually been to Santa Monica. It looks just like I've been that. to Santa Monica. I liked Laverne and Shirley yeah. till the last season where uh, Shirley left, and then they moved to California for some reason, all of them, Lenny and Squiggy and the Big Ragu. Yeah, I remember They that. all moved the to California, and uh, then uh, where Shirley's living, it's or Laverne, rather, where she's living, it's haunted. I watched that and I go, Jesus Christ! Yeah, I never, this thing is just bizarre. I wasn't a huge Happy Days fan. Yeah. I, mean, I liked Happy Days. I just I never. I thought the Fonzie character was just ridiculous. Fonzie's great. Yeah, I just I mean, he's five a, seven, one hundred and fifty pounds, and everyone's I, afraid of him. Iconic. Yeah, I just, <laughs> and he's like forty, hanging out with teenagers. <laughs> He's not 40. It was just weird. <laughs> well, what about 902 at all? I never saw a second of it. What are they were all like in their late 20s? <laughs> One of them was like 38. Play, I, were they playing high school? high school? Yeah, I never watched a second of that show. Uh, Shane watched it one season, so I, I watched it with him on Wednesday nights. It was, we watched it one season, and, you know. <laughs> it's just like, well, they do that a lot. Even like Ralph Macchio, when they did the, he was like twenty three or twenty four when they did the original Karate Kid, because it came out in eighty four. Well, the oldest student on nine hundred two one zero was the hottest. Yeah, was it Burt Mustin? Oh, the no. nerdy girl. Yeah, yeah the nerdy yeah, girl Gabrielle was the hottest, and she was like in her late thirties, I think, or something. Uh, Burt Mustin, uh, you know. That's just he's such a great character actor. He really was. Was she the hottest? Was he the hottest when he was older? <laughs> Burt Mustin. Burt Mustin was born in like 1876. He was on like a week or so before he died on uh, on the Tonight on show. Tonight show. I, I remember it. He was on that show yeah. a few times. Yeah. I think the last time he was on it was 1977. That's I think the year he died. Yeah. And he was almost 100 years old. Incredible story. I mean, he worked for 60, I mean, he car retired, salesman. car salesman, exotic cars, fancy cars in Pittsburgh, and then he spent his retirement in Hollywood. Yeah. From 65 to like 85, 90, he spent 25, 30 years in Hollywood. He was everywhere. He was I mean, in he, everything. Everything. Yeah. I think he died in 1977. He's the kind of guy, if you said his name to people, they wouldn't know. But if you showed him the phone. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's Burt Muscle. Died at 92. How are you liking this, Indy Hawk? (laughs) Uh, He began. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Uh, His professional acting career at 67. They cast him in the 1951 film, the 1951 film, uh, Detective Story. Uh, character uh, actor uh, worked extensively in film and television from the 50s to the 70s. His last role was as Arthur Lanson in the CBS sitcom Phyllis. I remember that. What year did he die? Was it 77? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Burt Mustin's been <clears throat> dead for almost 50 years. 
Uh, he was in Leave it to Beaver, The Abbott and Costello Show, The Loretta Lung, Young Show, Cavalcade of America, The Public Defender, A Treasury Men in Action, The Lone Ranger, Fireside Theater, Tales of the Texas Rangers, Mackenzie's Rangers, Lux Video Theater, Studio I mean, it's a fascinating story. I mean, it's just... I mean, yeah, Dragnet, Armis Brooks, Gale Storm Show, General Electric Theater, Peter Gunn, and the detective, uh, Peter Gunn of the Texan, rather. I mean, and and numerous other series. Think about that. He lived in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, then he spends his last 25, 30 years in Hollywood. I mean, it was an incredible story. Then he was in the Over the Hill Gang movie, and the Over the Hill Gang Rides Again. Aren't you remember that gang? Yeah. He also was in All in the Family. I remember his his couple appearances in All in the Family. Uh, Sanford and Son. I remember him in Sanford and yeah, Son, too. Yeah, he was in the episode Home Sweet Home for the Agent. Yeah. A- and remember the Mexican he... neighbors, and they'd say good morning. He'd say, <laughs> they'd say buenos dias. He'd say, yeah, bones and beans to you, too. <laughs> I don't think some of the stuff Fred said back then could. Who was more yeah. racist, Fred or Archie Bunker? Archie, wasn't he? Oh, Archie. Yeah. You know, but they handled that so well, and then they toned them. You know, they toned it down as it went What's on. What's so funny though is Carol O'Connor was nothing like that. I mean, he was such a talented no. actor. I mean, I, I would argue that he was one of the more underrated actors, but maybe he wasn't underrated. He got in arguments with Norman Lear. Um, because uh, Lear wanted the character you know, a certain way, and uh, he would tell Lear, you're going overboard with this thing. People aren't, yeah, they may be racist and everything, but people aren't inherently mean. But I do remember. Except for now. I do. I was young enough to where I didn't really understand much back when Archie Bunker was in his heyday. I was eight and I, but I remember seeing Carol O'Connor, like on The Tonight Show, and I remember being stunned. I'm like, wow, where's Archie? I mean, you know, I didn't yeah. really understand. The, oh, he was, and he was, I'm, I was just blown away. And I just remember my dad saying, that's the actor in the man. And that's when I really started to, because he was, because when you watch Archie Bunker, you just, you, and when you're young yeah. like I am, you think that's him. But he was just, he was, not, it was, I mean, he was a very talented actor. Yeah. But he thought at times Lear wanted him to go. Too far. Too far. And he. You well, know, Norman Lear was ahead of his time. Yeah. Didn't he just die? Yeah. Yeah. Like a, was he like 101. a 101. Wow. And, and I love it again, AP. And was still... No cause of death was given. Well, oh, I'm sure it was the vaccine. <laughs> was he vaxxed? Yeah. I'm sure it was, he was vaxxed. It was COVID. <laughs> well, people put, I don't know whether it's serious or not, but people Some put people that, do that to tease yeah. the, yeah, just the to, conspiracy yeah. theorists. Because, man, there's a lot of them on Twitter, man. I mean, you see these people, their whole account is dedicated to proudly unvaxxed. Fauci should be in jail. He should be down in Gitmo for the rest of his life, or he should be executed for treat. There's people out there, they just go on every day. That is their mission in life, is to push their anti-vax stuff. I mean, what a useless life. You know, Norman Lear was working until he was 101. I should just point that out. Yeah, well. <laughs> now, that'd be you doing this for, like, another 26 years? <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Todd's, Todd's retired, retired and in Arizona. Sipping out of my tie. I'm dead. <laughs> Suter's dead. Yeah. No, Suter's dead. No, he's just down in Florida permanently. Yeah. At that point. But yeah, could you see yourself doing this for no. another 26 years? No, I can't see myself doing this for another five. I've heard that before. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think you do. Time. I think you do need to usher in the 80s though with this show. No, I don't. You imagine doing the show at 80? No. I, really I mean, don't. if Biden can run the country, you can run this damn radio station. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. Jesus. Oh, you could maybe if a couple more years, maybe you can get back, try to another shot at politics. Maybe your age will help you then. You know, back then when you ran, you were only in your late 50s. Now you're 80. <laughs> so I think we can trust you more. I, I was beat out by a guy that, and the whole community knew that he completely lied. But he didn't win either, though, did he? No, but he, didn't he win, but he got more votes me. than him. Who ended up winning? Do you remember who won? Uh uh-uh. uh. I wasn't even here yet. Uh Matt, I, was it Matt Hyatt? No, that was later. Okay. I your first know. run? I wasn't here for your first run. No, but... that was two thousand three. Was it Fob? 
I don't remember. Those guys? Honest to God, I don't remember. Because when I, when I got here, when did you do your second run? It was we were in Coralville. Yeah, two thousand nine. Yeah, right about the time I started. Yeah, it, yeah, I remember that because um, yeah. uh, those were classic. You were still at the Press Citizen. Yeah, and their Press Citizen just ripped. Oh, the up. letters would only like only mean letters for Steve would get. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how did that thing with the Press Citizen ever start? <laughs> Who reached out? Did they reach out to you guys? I think they did. Suter, because I didn't in- initiate it. It must have been Suter. Suter and uh, and uh, Brown. Okay. Yeah, Dan, Dan Brown. Brown. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, because that's when I Well, remember... there was a big... When I first came here, uh, uh, Brown and the former owners were real good friends. Yeah. And we had a deal going on, and then, I, you know, I'm going to run it like I'm going to, you know. Well, yeah. And then ta- he... it, in all fairness to the former, you know, I made them. They were minorities then. I, I kept them at the station. And then, but yeah, yeah, he didn't like the way the transition went. Yeah, he thought, yeah well, and then he ended yeah. up marrying somebody at the paper who had was an editor, and she didn't like it either. Yeah, yeah, they didn't like. But I, that's why but I was part of it was because they were friends with. The yes, it was personal. That I just it was personal. But I I was surprised yeah. though when they when we started because that's how I first started doing radio with you. I remember me Sacramento and Hamilton would alternate. Mm-hmm. They quit showing up, and then I kept, started doing it all the time. Well, the first one that quit showing up was Sacramento. Yeah, he just, was, Hamilton I, would show up. He would just be miserable. You know, he just made it obvious that that was the last place on earth that he wanted to be. And then I just started doing it more and more, and one thing led to another. Sacramento would just not show up, and you yeah. thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Just an empty chair. <laughs> well, we were on Hugh Street then, and, and we remember we pointed the camera yeah. at the empty chair yes. for the hour. <laughs> the <laughs> camera was just focused on the empty chair. You'd be like, We'd like to thank Ryan Sacramento for not being here today. <laughs> yeah. But that's how this whole thing started. Because actually, I remember the first radio, Roy Justice used to come out to the Press yeah. Citizen. We'd go up to the front boardroom, and it was we'd do this morning thing. I don't remember what station he was on or anything, but I remember see. going up to, hey, Roy's here. you got to go up and talk Hawkeye Sports for 15 minutes. That that was probably some of the very – that was like in the early, ni- early mid-90s. That was a long time ago. And I remember we did that, but that didn't last very long. You know, and like now there is no Press Citizen. I wish we would have. Of a video of that same. Yeah. Because <laughs> we did. We were promoting he's coming up, and then he never showed, and we just put the camera I remember that. the empty chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember those days. So, And then we are doing a show tomorrow. Right? Yeah. But we're not right. doing one on New Year's Day? No. Okay. All right. No. And then, um, yeah, the game starts at noon. So, yeah, by the time we do a show on Wednesday, we should have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot to look back at. And um, maybe, remember, Don wants to come on. Maybe we'll have Don on that Wednesday since the game will be over and we can preview the, by then we'll know who's in the national championship too, won't we? Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to Don about coming on next Wednesday because we were going to have him come on and kind of recap Iowa season and preview the national championship game. So I'll look into getting him on for next Wednesday. And it'll just be freaking nothing but the Hawks. brought up a lot of good memories. Nothing but the Hawks, though. Just straight 90 minutes of Hawks. Hawk talk. Yeah. Please call. Green we Black. never drift when Don's on. Have you Green noticed that? Oh, no. We do not drift when Don's on. No. We drift when Haluska's on. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 But we, we, we haven't really tested that water with Don. No, yet. I don't want to. I don't want to. Adam handles it fine. I got, uh, yeah. Well, Adam's more. I like when Adam brings up something you talked about before the show started. Yeah. You know, yeah, Adam listens. listens and he gets it, and and, and Adam does show prep too, yeah. just like and Don. I believe he prepares. That Don listens. I know that Don listens on occasion. Yeah, I think Adam listens more. Yeah, yeah I do too. But yeah. no, Adam does a great job, and yeah. I appreciate the fact that he puts in. Yeah. I mean, he takes it pretty serious, and I know I've had people reach out and say they love Don and Adam. Oh they, yeah, so they I can arrange that trip to take Adam down to Burlington, and we'll start yeah. we'll start having Adam on more consistently yeah. once football's over and we start getting. Bas- there just hasn't been a lot going on basketball wise. I mean, they've had one game in the last nine days, you know. So, but once we get into January, we'll start having, trying to have Adam on at least once a week, talk hoops. Okay, I'm not being a smart ass either. Does anybody know what happened to what Brent Balbonat is doing now? I don't. I have no clue, but I would be the last person that would know. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some people that know more, but I like I couldn't tell you. 
Yeah. No idea. I hope he still do. I mean, he was really good. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I I hope he's do. I you know some. Wasn't he at Toledo? Yeah. yeah. And they didn't they did they fire him or did they just force him out? Or I what? believe they fired him. But we don't know why. And for, we know. Well, he didn't he do a basketball game at U and I, and then like two days yeah, later he was done. We did a, well that night he was done according to my sources so did he say something on the air yeah he uh, ripped biden he ripped biden on the air yeah why would he have ripped biden like that was i a don't long, know that was a long time ago well it was a couple years ago wasn't it yeah well, wasn't it it was before biden was president mm-hmm. he was for the other team evidently he made something political. so they didn't want him to say anything political yeah yeah Okay, which I mean, we don't know what it was, and I, I never heard what it we was. don't know what it was or anything. I've heard it from. This is what I heard from people that listen to the broadcast that I know from Waterloo. Okay, and they were listening to the broadcast, and that's what they told me. Well, if that's their rules, so, then that's their rules. I mean, well, yeah, you can't get well, and I can understand that. Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. sports broadcast. Yeah, where, where you can't get political. Yeah, and I know we yeah. talk politics some, but not near well, as much as what our critics say. We, no, we but, don't talk about but it that much. We're not doing play by play and do, do no, a, do no. a college game. Yeah, and we're not representing a college either. Yeah, we're so, representing this state. That's out what I've the heard. Field. You know, and I'm pretty sure about it. But I, I just brought him up because I was wondering the other. You should get him on Hey Lang. He's yeah, yeah. Well, if you can, I don't know how to get a hold of him, but. I'm sure, I'm sure he's some, not a big social media guy. He was, look, listen, this guy was ridiculously dedicated. When he was working at KXIC, he'd go on at 6 in the morning, do the morning show, and then I remember a baseball game. He was on, you know, he did the morning show. He got off at 9. He went back on at 10. There were rain delays and crap. And as I was going to bed, I, and I couldn't sleep that night. I turned on the radio, and they were still doing the freaking game, and it was like 10.30. Sounds, yeah. like, Hunter. Had Sounds like Hunter's schedule. Yeah. The Big Ten schedule was different back then. You had a lot of doubleheaders that were scheduled. Yeah. And it oh, was, man. Oof. Those doubleheaders were And tough. he was still doing the game. And, I thought, and then the next morning, he was on the morning show. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> or when we had the flood, and he had to be there yeah. till like 7 o'clock yeah. at night. Yeah. Meanwhile... Todd's just on two and a half hours. Yeah. Well, I just got heard from my doctor. They want me to check in. I mean, all this check-in stuff. I, I mean, know. I hate that. Because they already got the stuff. You know, so they make you fill it all out. But I've already filled it out for the physical that I've already had. Yes. Yeah, but they want you to fill it out every time, and they already got it. It's called a computer. You got the information. Well, and they don't give I don't me a know it, why. Well, they didn't give me a number to call, but I've got, I'm going to call them when I get off the air and let them know that I... Was exposed, and so you think they're going to tell me to wait till come in next? I don't week. know that. I know that they're going to ask you. Yeah. Well, I'll just call them. Okay. I'm not going to fill this out. So, all right, well, let's do a wrap on this. Right. And um, everybody have a good Friday and.